I'm just saying they get paid all this money. Where were they in game five, six, and seven? Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Steve Dangle here. Welcome to watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. I'm Steve Dangle, which I've already told you, but I thought I would tell you again. I know. It's very silly. It's a very silly thing that uh, I am doing these games, but I rather enjoy it. Don't you? I am a great, great luck charm for the Montreal Canadiens. So any Habs fans who are like, why is the Leaf fan doing these streams? Because the Habs are, uh, what is their record now? Five and three when I do these streams. Watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. We had, we had the graphic wrong in the first round. That's what it was always supposed to be. Watch a Leafs game. It's okay. We fired we fired the guy who, who made the bad graphic. His name is uh, Drew. Have you, have you heard of him? It's Drew. Uh, as always, click like on the video. Click subscribe. Tell all your friends. Send this to your uncle. He might hate it, but he might not. Send it to your aunt. What about your cousin? Make a connection. You know how you're always like, I'll text that person who I haven't spoken to in six months tomorrow. Let this be the day. Anyway, uh, boy, these playoffs don't stop, do they? Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to figure out the lineups because the Habs lied, literally. Last time <laughs> they uh, tweeted out their lineup and Jeff Petrie wasn't on it. And then he was. And we all talked about his eyes. And then he was arguably Montreal's best defenseman. They go up 3 nothing. Vegas and specifically Alex Petrangelo almost tie it and send the game to overtime. But Montreal ties the series at ones. And with that, uh, I want to get to a little betting. Uh, with Sports Interaction providing competitive odds on all sports, Sports Interaction is Canada's odds maker. Of course, you got to be 19 plus and you got to play responsibly. If you don't, no, that's very bad. Here's what we got. First team to score. Vegas are the favorites by a decent little margin there. Montreal are not the favorites. I don't care who you think is going to win this game. You have to pick Montreal. You simply do. In this series, Vegas scored first game one. Montreal scored first game two. Steve, why are you so convinced Montreal is going to score first? Because Montreal... The Montreal Canadiens have played 13 games in the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs. They have scored first in 10 of them. No, you did not hear that wrong. They have scored first in 10 of them. You don't have to even think they're going to win. Game two in the first round, they lost 5-1 to Toronto. Guess what? They scored first. It's what they do in these playoffs. And you can understand why they've been such a success if they're going to score first the vast majority of the time, and they have Carey Price in net. So that's what I'm saying for sports interaction. Go there, tell them Steve sent you, and good luck. So, what do we know? Chandler Stevenson's still out for the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Nosek, looks like he's going to be in the lineup. Alex Tuck, Getting moved up to first line center, buddy. Between Pacioretty and Stone, who Pacioretty did have the one good chance, the one off the post, but I, boy, I really did not like what I saw out of Vegas's first line. I didn't like what I saw out of any of their forwards. It just felt like anytime they got anything going, it was from their defense. And Montreal, no Dominic Ducharme behind the bench with a positive uh, COVID test, which seems. Just absolutely. I mean, it's it's this season in a nutshell, right? Like, you just don't know what to predict. You don't know what to think. Ever. Ever. Unless it's me telling you that the Habs are going to score first. I won't feel bad if I'm wrong. Well, I will. But, I gave you my reasoning. I wasn't just like, oh, you know, I got a hunch. I was like, how about they've scored first 10 out of 13 times? I think that's a good reason. To put money down, everybody. Oh my god, the chat is flying. Over 5,000 of you. Let's go. Uh, what do we got? Uist. Is Kaprizov going to sign with the Wild? Yeah, so we got some breaking news before the show. One is that Alexander Barkov uh, just won the Selkie Trophy, captain of the Florida Panthers. Extremely underrated forward. And it feels like we just pick a guy... <laughs> 
who is a Selkie nominee, and then he's going to be a Selkie nominee for the next at least half decade. So congratulations to Barkov for getting in the conversation and then actually winning it. Um, but with Kaprizov, there's a report. Kevin Weeks uh, tweeted uh, just a few minutes ago. Kaprizov basically is in Moscow right now, and he's considering signing a contract in the KHL with CSKA Moscow. Now in the KHL, they got deep pockets. I believe, uh, I believe the income is untaxed. Um, I used to work for them. Um, without, it was a trip. <laughs> How about that? It was, uh, it was something. A lot of the stories you hear. Yep. I live those stories. Uh, I, I think this is just a tactic. Someone says this every year. Some star every single year says, oh, I'm going to Europe. Oh, I'm going to hold out. And they almost Never do it. Usually when they do, you don't care. Kirill Kaprizov, you would care, certainly. But uh, it's only June 18th. Um, there's quite some time to get this figured out. Uh, before puck drop, let's see if we can get any others in. Robert, what did Montreal media trade to Toronto for Dangle? Um, I believe that was three consecutive losses. Happy to, happy to answer your question, Robert. <laughs> Kylan, uh, if you could add two NHL teams to the league, what cities would it be and what would be their team names? Oh. One would be the Seattle Kraken. <laughs> no, um, that is a magnificent question. I was trying to think of an American city. No, screw it. They have too many teams already. We're giving Quebec City a team. Rip the Band-Aid off. I'm sick of talking about it. They got the building. They got the fans. They'll probably ask the Colorado Avalanche for their jersey back. I don't know if they're going to get it. Um, and they'll be called the Quebec Quebecers because the puck is about to drop and I don't have time to be creative. Uh, the other city, and a lot of you are going to roll your eyes, Saskatoon. I... If you've been following me for a while, you know I love me some Saskatoon. I think it's a great city. Here comes Vegas. Man, did they get caved in in the shot category last game? They got to have a much better start. Kind of tough on the road. Um, Saskatoon, and they're going to be called the Saskatoon Sam Squanches. Um, but here's the story I always like to tell about Saskatoon. Um, Avatar was in theaters while I was there. I was there for the World Juniors when it was there. Avatar was in theaters. There were three different theaters. Three different screens showing Avatar. They were all sold out. Me and my friends got the last tickets. You know what else was sold out? The Tooth Fairy with The Rock. Remember that movie? Here's why they deserve an NHL team. Because I always say there's nothing to do and everyone's at the nothing. The fans pack the stands for every game. And I mean every game. There was a relegation game between like Latvia and Slovakia or something like that. And they drew, I think they still had 8,000 people. And when Canada tied it, came back from two goals down in the gold medal game. People forget that because they ended up losing in overtime. But when they came back to tie it, it's still to this day one of the loudest pops I've ever heard in a building ever. And I've seen a Stanley Cup final game in Nashville. A Stanley Cup final game in Pittsburgh. I was there for Benito, Benito, Benito. And it was at the gold medal game in Vancouver 2010. So when I say it's one of the loudest pops I've ever heard, you listen. I know... I know what I'm talking about. Let's watch the game <laughs> before I uh, take too many more of your questions. Ooh, Goldman says no Halifax. Oh, oh, that was a good chance for Vegas. You know what? Okay, Saskatoon's pretty small. I would give it to Halifax first. I think they have a bigger surrounding area as well. Uh, but after that, Saskatoon. Love Saskatoon. 
be nice if we could get Canada to 10 teams. Wouldn't that be great? What happened there? Joel Armia. Oh, wait, is that Armia? No, it's John Merrill. Wow, do they look alike. It's the facial hair. You know what told me it was Merrill? The mullet. As soon as I saw the mullet, I go, wait a tick. They have very similar facial hair, though. God, that's just a beautiful mane. Carey Price getting a little bit of repairs. I'm surprised we don't see more of this, by the way. This was uh, revolutionized by J.S. Jaguar. I want to say the 2003 Stanley Cup playoffs. Because that dude was a one-man army for the Anaheim Ducks en route to their Stanley Cup final berth. And especially in the first round when they were just getting steamrolled by Detroit. It just felt like constantly he's like, yep, my mask came undone. Yeah, no, I need my skate sharpened. Yeah, no, I got to do this. Just anything to get a breath. Uh, I should tell you, we're going to take a break during the first commercial break. Ooh, butt end. Uh, we're going to take a break during the first commercial break of this game because we're going to welcome back uh, Julian McKenzie. There's Joel Armia with the shot attempt, a.k.a. John Merrill. Uh, Julian McKenzie, who joined us for the first broadcast from The Athletic. He will be joining us uh, in the first period, which we're currently in. Second period, we're going to get my pal Andrew Berkshire. Very excited about that. Petro almost lost this guy there. Mm, we're going to get ice. Ice. Ace, baby. Logan, do you think the Habs could sign Hyman to replace Tatar? Oh my god. I hate that actually for amount of money. <laughs> oh man. I hate that. Also, by the way, that graphic is why you pick the Habs to score first on sports interaction. Listen to your boy. Um, Hyman is going to get, according to Chris Johnson, I asked him a question on my podcast. He can't get more term than uh, Josh Anderson did, unless he signed with the Leafs, obviously, because then he would get eight years. But he said he thinks his cap hit could be higher than Anderson's, which would bring him into the six range, which is wild. Carey Price, cool as a cucumber there. Uh, it sounds like he could stay in Canada. Sport lot. Oh, God. Jeff Petrie's so good. Sounds like he could stay in Canada, but the culprit appears to be Edmonton. By the way, um, if you ever want to watch two of me at the same time, uh, go to the Sportsnet YouTube channel in a different window and look up the Jeff Petrie trade tree. It's, I think it's one of the most underrated trade trees we've done. Uh, and it talks about the uh, trade that sent Jeff Petrie from the Edmonton Oilers to the Montreal Canadiens. For Montreal, it ends at Jeff Petrie. But they still have Jeff Petrie. For Edmonton, it's a lot. A lot of Oilers fans hate that trade. We got another icing here, but going the other way. A lot of Oilers fans hate that trade. But I defended it a little. Um, obviously, they didn't get anyone who is Canadian built, Canadian <laughs> Jeff Petrie. I believe they got Caleb Jones out of it. Um, but another player who they ended up getting out of it through way of picks uh, down the line was Cam Talbot, who is still a really good goalie. He's the reason, well, big part of the reason why the Oilers had a nice little run there in 2017, almost made the third round. A lot of Oilers fans would say should have made the third round. This could be something for Vegas here. Yeah, they still got it. God, Montreal's so smothering. I haven't got a shot, though. I guess they didn't count that butt end from Flurry. There's another example as Kevin was talking about the pairing of Weber and Chirac. And this line for the Vegas Golden Knights trying to get something going. I'm not going to lie, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> Before I was like, yeah, they got something here. They got something going here. And then able to jump on that loose puck. And if you're going to go to the front of the net, this deep pairing and really the top four for Montreal. Puck battling. Excellent job all throughout this playoff. 
Pat has been kind of nasty with the hats, eh? I know you're competing for a Stanley Cup, but there's none of this buddy-buddy crap at all. Oh! Vegas with a much, much better start to this game than in game two. They were brutal. Habs were great, I should say. Habs are such a confusing team defensively. Because, you know, oh, they get the lead and they find a way to hold on to it. It's weird. I find they're so much better when they're still attacking. That's what we saw in the first and second period last game. But Vegas, you know, they're up three goals. Vegas is able to score two. They're up 3-0 on the Leafs game five. They cough that up. Up 2-0 game six. They cough that up. Because they crawl into the shell. And I just feel like they're so much better off playing with speed and attacking instead of crawling into a shell. But they're also seven games away from a uh, Stanley Cup. Three wins away from a berth in the Stanley Cup Final. You want to see what a ticket to the Stanley Cup Final looks like, by the way? Maybe I'll show it at, I'll show it at Whistle. You should probably be watching the game. Got the decaf going. I know, me decaf. Here's a great YouTube clip where uh, an interviewer asked Steve Irwin, who's just this energizer bunny of a man. They asked him if he drinks coffee. He goes, no, me head would blow off. That's me. Except I do drink coffee. There's that tuck line again. Ooh, active defense. This is a complete opposite of the start that we saw game two in Vegas. Really cool to see fans back in the stands, even if it's not that many. Whoa! That was a pretty big hit there. Gallagher with some effort, though. Habs might get their first shot of the game here. That or Vegas is going to clear it. I don't know. Our first uh, time out, like I said. Oh, we got a penalty coming. It's coming to Vegas. I think. I got the camera on Kakanyemi. It was very confusing. Or maybe it's... Sorry, again. Every broadcast, I got to say, I, I don't have the audio in my ears. Oh, it is Kakanyemi. I was like, why'd they take so long to blow the whistle then? Okay. Uh, sorry, I always love the face. Okay, so we got our first break. We're going to be right back. And when we come back, we'll have Julian McKenzie with us. Stay tuned.
single on camera course. Oh, here we go. Hey everybody, Steve Dangle here. Welcome back to watch a half game with Steve Dangle. I am Steve Dangle in Vegas, halfway through a power play here. We got Julian McKenzie uh, joining us once again. Julian, how you doing, man? Man, I'm 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 living the dream as I live and breathe. Good to see you, my brother. <laughs> so, what did you see out of the game uh, from game two uh, after? We left off. I think they had just scored their 2 nothing goal. Yeah, yeah. The Canadians pretty much capped off like a really good first period. Uh, they got like one other goal after that, and, and the Golden Knights tried to pick themselves up and pick up their game with the hopes of obviously coming back. But just like we had seen in, in the first period, in the first game as well, the Canadians just had a pretty strong first period. The biggest difference, obviously, is that they got goals in game two and then you go to game three now where Vegas Golden Knights said okay we need to have a strong start and as far as I can see now Montreal still does not have a shot on goal and nope. they've spent a lot of offensive zone time uh, in the Canadian zone so the Vegas oh. Golden Knights have obviously flipped the script oh Patrick no he did not he wants one he wants one bad of course you can he tell. does of course he wants one are you I mean I know everyone tried to play down that storyline of like, oh, you know, everyone's moved on between the Canadians and the Golden Knights and the trade. But like, I'm sorry, if you're a backspatch ready, you don't want one in the Bell Center. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I think he definitely wants one. So I, I like to think I know a lot about the Leafs and their history and recent history and everything like that. I think I know a bunch about the rest of the league as well, but I think you're going to be a lot more crisp than I am with Habs history. What do you remember about the saga that led to Pacioretty uh, being traded out of town as Montreal's captain? Okay, I'm well, trying to dial it back Whoa. here. Uh, oh, the scrum by the bench. Oh, people not liking each other. Um, I think <laughs> from what I remember from the Max Pacioretty ordeal. Uh, actually, it was funny. I think I went to the for, to the game that, uh, I think it was the Canadians and the Flyers. And that was the game right after the trade deadline. And I think there was the expectation that like Pacioretty was supposed to be dealt around then. I think that's when it really, that was like the first time it was really starting to like blow up with the rumors. And I don't know. I think once it got to that point, I think for me with trade rumors and stuff, like once that starts to get out there, like, I don't think it's that long before the player ends up out and stuff. And it was just a lot of kind of negative energy around that whole situation. And at, once it got to that point, I felt, okay, it was only a matter of time. And I think a lot of people just expected that the Canadians were not going to win a deal dealing away Max Pacioretty because obviously his name was out there. I don't remember what his stats were, but everyone, a lot of people in Montreal, from what I remember, were just like, okay, the Canadians are not going to win a deal where they trade away Max Pacioretty. So that's why when the deal happened with Vegas and they got the pieces that they got, there was like an overwhelming amount of surprise and relief. Because if you're trading a guy like Max Pacioretty, uh, and his value is not necessarily as high as you would like it to be. Like you're, you're obviously expecting to come out on the low end of it, but you come out with Nick Suzuki, you come out of it with Tomas Tatar, you end up with a draft pick that ends up being uh, Matthias Norlander, who signed that entry level contract. Like if you're a Canadiens fan, you look at that deal, like you're pretty happy. Uh, Julian, I predicted before the game the Habs would score the first goal because in their 13 games, they scored the first goal 10 times. They're currently getting their show run outshot 11 to nothing, but here they go to the power play. If I know the hockey gods and how vindictive they are, they're about to score. 100. percent You need a break from these hockey gods, bro. You you need some, you need some bounces in your life. <laughs> man, man, what what's that like? What is that like, man? I'd like to know, but I mean, I mean, I'd like some to go your way for some sake, man. In all honesty, man, I feel like you've suffered through enough, man. I'm at this point where I'm very close to like muting Maple Leafs on my Twitter handle because of all the all the nonsense that's going around. Um, I realize I have a lot of time. And speaking of Maple Leafs, there's a friend of mine who wanted me to ask you a question, if that's okay, but it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, interfere with what you got going on. With an um, powerful, of course. Whoa. Yes, of course. 
Um, so the friend of mine wanted me to know. He says, it's a bit long-winded, but maybe you could express it better. Uh, what's worse to go through? Uh, the playoff loss to the Habs? Or having to go through another 82-game regular season before the teams can prove it uh, in the playoffs? Or losing Zach Hyman? I, I think it's probably the second one, but I don't know what Zach Hyman has to do with it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, do you see him? Oh! Oh, if that doesn't bounce oh, on him, cool. um, yeah. dude, it's all awful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> I mean, losing to the Habs is bad, um, just because you know rivals, and you're never gonna live it down. Basically, losing Hyman is gonna hurt my heart, and I'll probably do a video about that when it seemingly inevitably happens. Montreal generating some chances here. I don't know if it's led to any official goal. Um, but, dude, the, just the fact that the regular season does not matter. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do 82 games. Videos that take, like, four hours each. So what's 82 times four? Like, that's that's going to be a slog, knowing none of those games matter. Well, look at that strum in front. Across the line there, but I don't know if that'll count. Yeah, I'm not sure there. I'll, I'll stay off the Maple Leafs. I'm not looking at the comments, but I'm sure there are some people who are all like, why is the Habs guy talking about the Maple Leafs? Hey, at least it wasn't me. <laughs> you, you can bring them up. I can't. You can bring them up. I can't. Um, that's fine. No, that's, that's fine. You, you know, I, I got to shout out uh, Brian Burke for prior to the season, and this is also prior to him joining the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, he said that he thought the Habs were the best suited for the playoffs out of all the Canadian teams. You know, lo and behold, they uh, uh, finished 18th in the NHL standings. And look at them. They're in the final four. They're the last team standing. Uh, I have a question for you. Oh, sure. Uh, from the chat. Well, actually, I have two. Uh, cool. Garrett asks, what percentage chance does he honestly give the Habs to win? Which seems like a loaded question a little bit. Yeah. Right? It's pretty there's, loaded. Uh, there's a smell to it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I gather maybe this person is a subscriber to The Athletic and they saw that uh, my employer gave the Canadians zero chance at getting out of uh, the third round. I mean, it's also kind of different now for me to ask you this question because the series is obviously tied. Um, I'll tell you what, I think the Canadians have a much better chance of getting out of this series than I thought they did at the beginning of this series. It's kind of hard for me to put out a number, but I think that the Canadians have shown that, you know, obviously Vegas has the top front, top front talent that they have, but the Canadians are proving that they could play with them and they could hang with them. So I think they, I guess if I could put like a number on it, 50, 50 is okay. That's a fair number. That's I not bad. That's fine. That's a fair number. Um, my podcast co-host Adam Wild gave. Uh, How's he doing? Is he's, he okay? Well, he's I hear doing his fine. They're a bit of a of a you know, they're fine. Yeah. But he's uh, he's two hundred dollars poorer because uh, he made a bet with Jesse and I that the Habs would get swept. That's how little faith he had in them, and they go and win game two. So he had to donate two hundred dollars to Black Girl Hockey Club. Um. And I brought it up on today's show. Oh, yeah. I brought it up on salute, today's show. Salute. Shout out to BGHC. Absolutely. Uh, I brought it up how disrespectful it was to call for a sweep because in their history, there have been 27 sweeps involving the Montreal Canadiens. They have been the sweepers in 22 of them. They've been swept five ever. Um, the other question... Oh, wait, no. Oh, man. All these questions are coming in. Len says, what does Julian's shirt say? Okay, um, so my shirt says, why be racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic when you could just be quiet? Admittedly, I bought this shirt because uh, the popular artist Frank Ocean uh, wore this shirt a few years ago, but it was in white. And I wasn't sure where else you could get it, but I found it on Amazon and I bought the shirt. So uh, yeah, I figured it was just a cool shirt to wear. I 100% I agree, dude. Um, we got Theo asking, Julian, is dressing What's up? personally. <laughs> Julian, did this playoff run save Bergevin's job? 
Yes, it did. Here's the thing. Like, if I, I still think if the Canadians, you know, they, they poop the bed against the Leafs, his question, his, his job is very much in question. This is a guy who has like another year left on his contract. And I think the fact that he beat the Leafs, the Canadians beat the Leafs, you're thinking, okay, he's at least earned himself another year. If the Canadians find a way to make this a real series against the Golden Knights, that's extension for me, as far as I'm concerned. I I, I, I think so. Yeah, I think I think he might have earned himself an extension with the Molson family. And I, this is I'm, this is coming from somebody who thought, hey, maybe Bergevin had ran his course with the team. Uh, I just wanted to say, I'm sure the chat's going wild right now. I'm surprised the Habs aren't heading right back to the power play. Did you see that trip? I think it was on Caulfield. Oh, man. That's not the first time they've... Uh, Habs fans, especially this postseason and this series, and yet last game as well, they felt a lot of calls have not gone their way. So I'm not surprised the fans are jumping on this one. Yeah. I'll just add one thing about Bergevin as well. Sure. Um, essentially, like... I, I was definitely one of those people who felt that he probably was just basically just going about this year to save his job. We, considering the free agent moves that he did, the trades that he did, the way he let go of, of the goaltending coach, Stefan Wait, even the way he looked at press conferences sometimes, like, that's... I don't know if you got a chance to see any of them, but Mark Bergevin basically went about this year, like, I could get fired this year. So, dude must be very relieved. You see how he was with Carey Price? Like, he's relieved. Oh! 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 Oh, oh, wow. Josh Anderson. He rocked the net. Man. I think a lot of the criticism for Josh Anderson isn't necessarily the contract. It's his off games look so much worse when you see his on games. His on games, he looks like a force of nature. Like, he, he looks absolutely unstoppable. And he you makes plays like this. You know what's wild? This is just my opinion. Like, in some of the games where he, I mean, pretty much almost every game where he did not score because he's only scored once in this postseason. Like, I still see him doing, like, good things. Like, the fact that he's the high man up on the forecheck and he's applying that pressure. And he's also, like, just imposing himself with his physical presence as well. And it's actually led at certain points to to keeping the puck in the offensive zone. And I also think of game two, which like the play that he did on the Paul Byron goal, he like pushed the defense out the way. He basically set a screen that led to that broken play and Paul Byron capitalized. That's the second best thing he's done all postseason long. And I think if you're the Canadians and you, you look at Josh Anderson, you're like, man, of course you wish he got more goals in, you got more offensive production, but he's going to keep doing stuff like that. I mean, not to say that he's devoid of criticism, but, like, it's a lot harder to dump on him. I think there are other guys you could dump on. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I, I hate to go back to them, but there are very few players on the Leafs from the first round that I would say had a bad series. It's mm -hmm. honestly two guys. <laughs> but it's the most important, too. So, it's the most so, important, too. So what do you do? What do you do about that? Uh, Patty asks, does this series stop the North Division slander? Yes, it totally does. Because everyone... It, it totally does. I saw your eyes. Like, That's a yes wrapped in a no. No, 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 no. There's no no. I'll say this. Okay. A lot of people went into the third round thinking, oh, well, you know, the Canadians are going to get swept, like a good friend that we know. Or the Canadians are going to get smashed, essentially. Um, I know that the division, obviously, you know, let's talk about the North Division for a second here because it's so funny that's getting dumped on and it's like, oh, well, the, the team's talent compared to everyone else is just doesn't compare. And that might actually work from an overall team standpoint. You got to remember, like, what, three of the five best players in the league play there in the North Division? Like, the Leafs, obviously, with the talent that they have. I mean, Gary Price, one of the best goaltenders in the league, one of the best goaltenders of our era. Like, maybe the teams as a whole might not be as complete, like, as opposed to the Canadians right now who are going through the playoffs as they're going through them right now. But, like, I don't think the North Division deserves all that much slander that it's gotten. And I think if the Canadians find a way to defeat the Golden Knights in this series, yeah, I think that completely shuts everyone. Now, very good question here. Oh! Big price, there you go. I said big price by save, I was about to say. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, that might as well be his name. Um, we got a good question here. Can you ask Julian? Yes, I can. Uh, who the Habs are losing to Seattle? So I'll just set this up. I got cap friendly up. They have three no movement clauses. So you got to protect all three of those guys. And all three of them are guys you absolutely should protect. Uh, it's Brendan Gallagher. Jeff Petrie and Carey Price. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, so who do you think they lose? So I think if the Canadians don't do anything, if they don't make any moves with Seattle, and Seattle is just like, okay, we're taking somebody from this roster, Jake Allen is the guy they pick. I think Jake yeah. Allen, the way that he played uh, throughout much of the season in relief of Carey Price, who I think just made another save there. I think he did. Uh, a lot of people kind of valued him as like the unsung hero. I mean, he even won the team award essentially for that honor this year for the way that he just kind of stepped in and handled his business as as the number two guy behind Carey Price. And he's he's been their best backup for Carey Price pretty much since like remember when Peter Budai was there like he was he was reliable but like oh man it's funny it's funny to think like well Peter Budai but like yeah like seriously like the Canadians have struggled to find a really good backup goaltender that's why I think the Canadians at almost all costs almost all costs you don't want to get to a point where they're trading with four first round picks they need to find a way to keep Jake Allen for another year I think he has another year left on his contract you have to find a way to keep him so that way he can continue to back up Carey Price, especially if the team is going to look like this and with some more alterations, you would think, in the offseason. Yeah. They're set up. They're really set up so well. And I'm looking like they're going to have really good players exposed. I'm looking at their back end, though. Like if Vegas wants to stay close to the cap, or sorry, not close to the cap, um, spending as little as possible, like Elliot Freeman has suggested, you're not going to select a guy like Joel Edmondson. So then you go, okay, like they might have a couple decent forwards. Kakinyemi, it looks like you have to protect. I'm still a little. There's so many rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna front and act like I know every single rule when it comes to the expansion draft. But there's like, I mean, there's no. I don't see any of the young players being taken. Uh, I, I mean, I don't oh. think. John, oh. What? Oh, man. Jesus. Jay. I'm sorry. Like, trying to talk to you and also trying to watch the game at the same time. It's just Dude, really interesting. There's four and a half minutes left. Price has made 15 saves. And his team in front of him has gotten two shots. Like, I'm telling you, guys, I'm right. They're scoring first. I've seen this movie too many times. Dude, me too. I've seen this movie. And there's Canadians fans in the chat right now. I can't see the chat for what it's worth. But there are Canadians fans in the chat right now. I'm willing to put money on it. They have seen this happen before. Oh man, who was that? Was that was that Pacioretty? Who shook that Canadian's defense out of their shoes? Oh, oh man, I'm, damn! I'm focused on way too many things. I'm, I have Twitter up, and Sean McKenzie's face is, is staring at me right now. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. We got uh, someone in the chat. In, at, last time I was on, wrote, uh, "Hey, is that truly a guy related to Bob?" And I'm like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> Actually, it's funny because I don't know if you saw uh, I, I can see. Uh, Bob, Bob McKenzie on uh, on another podcast I have, one of the many I have, uh, the Water Boys podcast. We had him on as one of our first guests. And at the end of the recording, he asked me if we could be... <laughs> He, it's so funny. He said, this. He said uh, so, so now that we did the podcast, he's like, does that mean you're my brother from another mother? He 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 said that, and I was just like, you know what? I'm not mad. I'm, yes. <laughs> as long as you're not mad. As as, I mean, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Worst brothers you could have, I suppose. As a guy who doesn't have a brother, I would. I would. I would love one. That'd be cool. I never grew up with one. I, I don't have a brother either. You have a you have a sister, right? I do have a sister. Yes. Were you an only child? Uh, no, I have two younger sisters. Two younger sisters. I was about to say that question comes from Steve D. <laughs> oh, oh man. man! It just feels like Montreal. Like even the rushes aren't leading to actual shots on goal. And uh, but I swear they're going to score first. <laughs> Vegas said, nah, man, we need to take control of this game from the get-go. No more of these games where you sit back in the first and then in the second and the third, you put your you put yourself up there. I mean, the Leafs did that a bunch of times in games five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. You do not want to do that against this much Rocket Indian team, especially with the way that they start first periods. 
No. Oh, 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 that was a good one. Got to get that stick. You mentioned Anderson off the top of the show. And, uh, it's kind got... of fun, like, watching it like this. This is, this is, this is really fun. <laughs> I got to tell you, I really enjoy it. We, we were talking uh, just before we went live. Um, this is so much less stressful now that the team I cheer for isn't playing. <laughs> like, I'm actually really enjoying myself. <laughs> It's fun, man. That's that's fun. That's why people, when I see people lose their minds over the teams that they cheer for, I'm just like, thank God, like, my fandom now is just, like, cheering for players. And that goes for, like, other leagues. I'm in the NHL. Like, in the NBA now, like, I don't even cheer for teams because people move around so much. I just cheer for players. That's it. And a delayed penalty. Oh, Montreal. Ooh. Corey Perry with the veteran. Uh, I know they're not going to call another one, so I might as well get in his face. That's wild. So they're calling a is they're calling a penalty on the Canadians, but like I'm trying to pick up who that was, number twenty two on the Golden Knights, just like mauled a guy in the corner of the ice to the ground. Okay, all right. Oh, oh yeah. That's that's pretty bad. I mean uh, Yo, so okay, you look at that. I mean, yeah, it's in the numbers, but you look at that and then you look at um I think it was William Carlson and I don't Andrew remember Levinson. who it was on. It was Joel Edmondson. In the final minute of game two. Yeah, you're right. Inconsistency is the consistency. And now... Can I say the officials are bad? Can, am I allowed to say yeah. on Sportsnet on your live stream that the officials have been bad? They've been bad. All, not, not just in this series. They've been bad all playoffs. If Sportsnet gets a, a problem with that, like, I guess get mad at me. But the playoff, that the, but this postseason, I don't know what's going on with the referees. I don't know if... After what happened with Tim Peel in the regular season, they're just like, you know what, whatever. No, they've been bad. They've been bad. Julian, Gary Bettman is not my dad. You, you, you say whatever you want. You say whatever. I think they've been bad. I'll go I, I had a friend ask, have they been particularly bad this year? And I actually said no. And here's why. We ask that question every year. We do. Every year it gets turned on. Every year, or turned off, I should say. The rule book just gets turned off. Uh, I think it was um, Paul Almeida who covers the Oilers. He he was uh, he retweeted. It was that uh, Adam Pellick penalty from game. I think it was three against the Lightning. And he's like, he he just retweeted it. It's a very soft call by playoff standards. And he's like, reminder, Connor McDavid has not drawn a penalty in eight straight playoff games. <laughs> like, it's just so bad. I don't. So bad. I'm still mad about the, the Braden Point call in game two where he gets pushed into the goalie. It's like, like, what? Laura <laughs> Oh, no, it's, man. Is it, that was a genuinely terrible call. It's a joke. I saw... Someone's like, no, he had plenty of time to stop. Stop! <laughs> it's like somebody, somebody in my mentions was all like, oh, well, you know, uh, you got to be mindful of the direction that he goes into. I'm sorry, if you're going at top speed and someone kind of nudges you in a direction, you're just supposed to stop. You're just supposed to just not, you know, account for where you end up, where you end up. Like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Like, hockey culture, hockey people on the Twitter or whatever, you see some really bad takes. You oh, see some yeah. bad takes. It's not the worst one, but people all of a sudden become an expert. It's okay. It's okay if you can just say you don't know or you don't understand how some things work. It's okay. You don't have to be, like, an expert, but, like, don't say stuff like that because, oh, man, I can't even compose a whole sentence. Like, this is just... <laughs> or, or if you're not sure, like, maybe, maybe you don't know. Maybe you're like, did you have enough time to stop? Ask it as a question. At least yes. ask it as a question. Ask it as a question. Give me the idea that you don't know. Like, just just admit. Be humble. That's that's, that's all. That's People all. don't want to do that. Pride before the fall, my G. Pride before the fall. Absolutely. Do you have uh, any thoughts on uh, what to expect from uh, the second period or third before we let you go? Uh, the Montreal Canadiens need to ensure that they have a better second period, and I understand that's been uh, a not necessarily a sore point, but it's definitely been a talking point for this team throughout much of the playoffs with how they've played in the second period, but especially after what they went through in the first period where they where Carey Price essentially had to go through a barrage of shots. They cannot afford to sit back because we know how good this Vegas team can be. They can get themselves some goals. So Montreal has to step it up in the second period. Last thing, Julian McKenzie. First goal scorer. 
Put a name down. Who you got? Okay. First goal scorer. You know what? I'm going to ride with you and say it's going to come from the Montreal Canadiens. And I say it's going to come from UL Armia. I like that pick. I'm a, I'm really, he's really growing on me. Every playoff, you need a depth guy who has a big performance and it's been him so far. Although already in this game, I confused John Merrill for him. It's the facial hair. John Merrill? It's the, I know. Like he has a mullet. Like, like he has a mullet. Like that's what for the Montreal people, for the Montreal people in the chat, like John Merrill, if he was in the plateau, like. I would just assume he was a plateau guy. That's a very Montreal reference. But if the Montreal people understand what I'm talking about, you know. I'm going to pretend. I'll pretend. Uh, (laughs) Julian McKenzie from The Athletic. Always, always a pleasure. And you are always welcome back, my friend. Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, Tell your next guest I say hi as well. No. He doesn't deserve anything. Yeah, he's he's a jerk. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever. I'll, I'll tell him he has a high standard to live up to. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> good seeing right, you, man. dude. Yeah. Good seeing you too. All right. So this has been uh, watch uh, leave. No, I almost did it again. I really can't believe it. This has been watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. First intermission. It's zero zero Vegas with a huge advantage in the shot category, but that doesn't mean nothing. We'll be back soon.
Howdy, friend. Welcome back. Let's watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. That's what it's always been called. Okay? We're here on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. We got another sports interaction bet for the second period. Um, I haven't been right yet tonight, but I also haven't been wrong. So I'm going to count that as a victory. Sports Interaction, by the way, providing competitive odds on all sports. Sports Interaction is Canada's odds maker. Of course, 19 plus, And of course, play responsibly. So here's what we got. Over, under for Vegas team goals, 2.5. On the game. Obviously, they can't score 2.5. Do you think they're going to score two or less or three or more? Uh, right now, it's not looking very good for them scoring more than that. But you got to remember, they scored uh, two after they were down 3 nothing. It's hockey and also doesn't make sense. It's tough. Vegas did dominate that first period. Even though they didn't end up cracking Carey Price. They sure cracked the Habs. Are they going to keep that going? Not even sure what to tell you in this one. Because hockey doesn't make any sense, I would take the over. I'm not sure what you should take. Hey, we have another guest. He's not going to be as good as Julian McKenzie, um, obviously, but he's Thanks. still okay. <laughs> it's Andrew Berkshire, my buddy. How you doing, man? Not as good as Julian McKenzie. No, obviously not. Who is? I'm saying I'm not doing as well as Julian McKenzie. Oh, no, fair enough. Well, yeah, you, you're doing, like, not sleep training. It's just... The baby's just mad. No, it's not even the baby. It's the oldest. Toddler. I don't, Good luck when it comes to yours. That's all I'm going to say. So Tuesday's my son's first birthday. When do I stop calling him a baby? Uh, I mean, Miles is like four, almost 14 months now. And we're still calling him a baby, but he's toddling. So I guess he's te technically a toddler, right? He's He's walking around a little bit, so... We could probably stop, but it, it takes a while. I mean, I still call Dylan a baby, and then he gets upset. I am not baby. <laughs> <laughs> what was that accent? I am not. Oh, he baby. says some some things he says in French. Baby is one. Bebe always bebe. So, uh, like, does your wife know French or? Yes. Yeah, she's fluent. Oh, okay. Because I know you don't. Not well enough. I know some hockey French. I can I can read French slowly, but in terms of speaking, uh, it's not going to happen. Hockey got to really work is, on it. Hockey really is its own language. I I know I used to work with a Russian guy who learned English through hockey, and he talks like he talks like he played in the WHL. And yeah, that's why it's a lot of it. A lot of it doesn't make sense. Uh, apparently, everyone in the chat is chirping me for taking so long to get a snack. I'm allowed to get a snack. I ate one and then I brought you one. His name is Andrew Berkshire. You see what I did? You see? I did. I, did. I see that. Um, what has caught your eye so far about this series between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Montreal Canadiens? I I'm so, I thought the whole series was kind of be like would be like that first period. To be honest, um, not to say that I didn't think the Canadians had earned their way here. They had, uh, but the Golden Knights are just such a powerhouse team, right? And I, I think that a lot of the talk about the North Division being not that great, I don't necessarily think that in its entirety is true, but in terms of the top end, whoa, that was a big Ooh. hit. Jeez. Not a penalty. Nothing is. But, uh, well, apparently. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I thought that, uh, you know, a lot of that talk was more about uh, like the entire division as a, as a whole but it, i to me it was just they didn't have any of the top end teams that to uh, like vegas and colorado they only had toronto and as we've seen toronto didn't show up when it mattered oh. most didn't come up didn't this Braden McNabb on nick suzuki my lord actually i don't even know if that was a bad hit oh it's not no that's oh. pretty clean no just that's big uh, guy small guy <laughs> yes that is very uh rob blake he didn't get, no the ref put his arm up for is that for the penalty no they, they called something that hit unless it's charging did he take too many strides into it i think i think he might have had it up for ice or something i don't know i think if he took too many strides oh, okay shit whoever got it for retaliating yeah all right all right i again i didn't see anything wrong with the hit but i also missed what weber did because I was listening to you and also wondering uh, if Suzuki got the number of that truck. Yeah, I think if that would have been charging, Suzuki would be in the hospital. McNab McNabb's a big boy. Yes. Ooh. 
Um, I want to I wanna ask you questions, but it's so hard with the power play. you got to pay attention to the power play. Woo! Vegas' power play, when they get sustained pressure, is unbelievable. Did they... So I know you know a lot about, like, very specific numbers. People talk about advanced statistics. No, Andrew actually knows advanced statistics. Um, do you know anything in particular about Vegas' power play beyond it's very, very good? I haven't actually looked into it. I know that they're on a really cold streak, which kind of reminds me of what was going on with the Leafs uh, at the end of the season there where everybody was like, what's wrong with this power play? And the underlying numbers were... Mostly fine, but they weren't completing. I, I think the, ba- the main thing that I see from Vegas' power play is they maybe rely on their defense a little bit too much. Oh, that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, they, they like to keep the puck up high and then try to get traffic in front. And I think they have the talent to, to kind of get through the middle down low a little bit more, and they're a little bit hesitant to, hesitant to do that. But part of that's due to, I think, in this series, the way the Canadians play. They're just so good at boxing out and keeping the front of that net clear. Uh, really, only in game one was the first time all playoffs since uh, like games two and three against the Leafs where they really let uh, passes through the middle of the ice there, and they've been boxing out pretty well since. Um, by the way, producer Drew saying Weber got that penalty that is basically killed off uh, for retaliating on McNabb. I mean, by playoff standards, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, well, they called it interference, but all I saw was like a slash in the hands after the whistle. Yeah, I think it might have been behind the play. It's, it must have been. It's really difficult. There's a lot. Uh, Ryan says, Andrew, are you raising your kids to be Leafs fans? This is a question not from me. It's from Ryan. Well, it's a fair question, because during the first round of the playoffs, I was asking Dylan for his predictions every night, and he kept on picking the Leafs. And then in Game 7, he went and picked the Habs. So, who knows? But I, I haven't put anything into him. He doesn't sit still long enough to watch hockey, really. He's watched, like, two games with me his whole life. He's just, uh, he has too much energy. Maybe I'll have better luck with Miles. But right now, uh, it's all about soccer. Not watching it, just playing it. He loves playing soccer. Oh, that's good. Now, that's all you want him doing is burning energy so he actually goes to bed. Yes, Maybe. you would think that, point. but on soccer nights, he comes home and he's too hyped up and he doesn't go to bed. I get it. I get it. Um, Xander, what are Andrew's predictions for the game and the series? I think this one, just based on how Price has seen the puck, I think I'm with Steve here that the Canadians are going to... This looks to me like what the Canadians were doing in like 2010 against the Capitals. And as great as Halak was in that series, when you go back and watch it, which I did for uh, the PDO cast with Dmitry Filipovich uh, like a year ago, and it, it, was, it was surprising to me how clear uh, the looks were that Halak was getting. He didn't have to fight through traffic as much as you would expect. And the first two games, I thought Price really had to fight through traffic. And this game, he doesn't seem to be struggling to see the puck at all. So I think we're going to end up seeing like a 45 shot game and like a two to one Canadians win. But I think the Golden Knights are going to win the series. Yeah, last game was a really funny one for Price, I thought, because I thought I thought the team in front of him was dominant. Yeah. Um, and even though he wasn't allowing goals until the very end of the second period, I thought he looked super uncomfortable in the net. He was flying around, flailing. Right now, he just looks like in ice sculpture <laughs> like yes. i'm really i don't know how you beat him when he's in this mode that's the weird thing about price right is it's kind of the opposite of mark andre fleury when mark andre fleury looks like he's possessed by something and darting all over the net you're like oh he's gonna stop everything and price when he's doing that you're like oh he's a little bit off his game he needs to just not move let the puck come to him and yeah that's what that's what he looks like Ooh. tonight Oh, there you goes. go. Oh, i was wrong about the first goal no wrong wrong i led you astray that it was wrong the worst gotta be the worst feeling in, in the world as a hockey player if you're the guy that the camera pans to after a goal against right i was i made that a thing during my lfr videos oh you never want to be camera pan guy oh, it's stalls a, camera pan guy nicola wa yeah oh, oh, oh that's a no that's camera pan pan guy. oh eric eric what are you doing that's that pass was so clean. The reason I didn't react in the moment is I thought one of the Golden Knights got it behind the net and dished it in front. I was Ooh. expecting it to be, to be the, the like stall lost the battle or got to the puck late or something. Oh, that and you don't expect that out of your veterans. And now, like, what a completely different game. Montreal scores first. They're in their heads. 
but now it's the shots are 22 to 4 and it's one nothing for Vegas. Yeah, and you're like where's the hope? That's tough. Oh baby, they, I, unassisted. I don't know about that. I saw a pretty clear assist. Uh, Wa, by the way, really good pickup, I think, for Vegas. Uh, coming to them from Carolina in the uh, Eric Halla trade. How? Let me let me ask you this. What do you remember? What you said about the Golden Knights after the expansion draft, once they had picked their oh, team? Same as everyone else. I said they were going to be terrible. They're garbage. Okay. I'm pretty sure I had a tweet show up on their like uh, pregame ritual where they were showing everybody saying they were going to be crap in the playoffs. I was like right before Drew Doughty or something, and everyone was like, "Oh, Drew Doughty's tweet is on the ice." Or like Drew Doughty's quote is on the ice. And I was like, "Whew, no one noticed mine. That's perfect." <laughs> you know, I've had really bad luck with that. Vegas before their Cup final in 2018 played my voice recording, where I was like, "Oh, they're an expansion team." They took one of my Sportsnet videos, and then uh, Dallas uh, put me in multiple videos last off season. Here's Cole Caulfield with a break. Scores! Oh, nice. Small Game's goal boy. Up. At it again. Good, Th- that kid is unreal. Unreal. He's just got, like, the confidence of, like, a 10-year vet. Oh, he's super poised. Point streak to five games. Didn't even realize that. So, so you, you've, you've worked a lot in statistics. How do you account for something like Cole Caulfield? This college rookie who shows up 10 games left in the season. The ha- the numbers say a very clear thing about the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, and then this guy shows up. Scores on the fifth shot as well. Uh, so now, like, what, what do you do when a force of nature like that just throws a wrench in the whole equation? Well, it's, it's tough because I think... The Canadians also started the season so strong, not just in terms of results, but like their underlying numbers were incredible, right? And then they fired Claude Julien, and there was this slow descent during the season where things never really turned around and the numbers kept on ticking down. And then Brendan Gallagher went out with a hand injury and things just plummeted. Like they went off the off the wall. And then you saw like the end of the end of the season there where the Canadians veterans just kind of coasted in, like Weber was out. Uh Gallagher was out, Tatar was out, Dano was out for a bit with a concussion, Price was out with a concussion, and it was just like, okay, Suzuki, Caulfield, save us, please. Just go in there, have fun, win a couple games in overtime, get us in there, and it seems like everybody else was just like, okay, as soon as we get enough points to scratch out the Calgary Flames, we're going to coast in, and then we'll start pushing the guys in and play through injuries and give them 100%. So it was really hard to judge how good they were going to be and I think even when they had their lineup together, like in that series against the Leafs, like Weber could not handle the puck at all. His hand was in a cast the day before the first game. Uh, Gallagher couldn't handle the puck or shoot or pass. He was just like, okay, I'm just going to be gritty. That's my whole thing. I'm going to be gritty and try to shut down Marner and Matthews. And he did really well at it, but like he couldn't put the puck in the net. And it took a few games for them to really figure out what they were going to be, well, what they could do and who fit in the best spot, right? Like, would they they try to make the Gallagher line an offensive line anyway, or would they just create a sunk cost, make sure that the Leafs' top line doesn't score, and just take that trade-off as, like, 0-0? And when they took that trade-off, it really helped the Canadians. And, like, I watched a lot of tape of that series just to see, like, you know, what went wrong for the Leafs, actually? And they keyed in so hard on Austin Matthews. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry for bringing up the Leafs. It'll be really quick. They keyed in so hard on Austin Matthews. I don't think he had, like, a single shift against the Deneau line where Deneau was further than, like, three feet away from him. He's just always in his face. And Marner had extra space because they were keying in so hard on Matthews, and he just overthought every play. You know, it was, like, the extra space that he didn't expect to get, and instead of taking good shots and making passes to other players, well... You know, Matthews was essentially serving as a, like a two-person decoy. It just never, never happened. I think that's part of why Morgan Riley was so great, though, is he actually did take advantage of the extra space given to him. Right. So th- this is something sort of we were talking about, and it does relate to the Montreal Canadiens, so I'm going to keep going down this path. Because, uh, you know, you see two $11 million players get shut down. Marner was getting all the heat, and I go, oh, 
and, and I and I go, well, wait, Matthews is not guiltless here. Um, and you were like, well, no, I had a look at the numbers, and Matthews actually had, you know, a guy shadowing him the whole time. It's Marner. So it really was just a matter of, like, what, what did he do? He overthought it. He, he turned it over too much. He didn't shoot enough. I think it was just like Marner has a go-to guy, right, in Matthews. And that, that's the play that the Maple Leafs go for most of the time. And when that option is taken away consistently and you just get frustrated and you're also in your own head because you've had now three years of really poor playoffs and you haven't been able to score even strength in 18 games, yeah, I think things just build up on you. It, like, Max Pacioretty gets like that, right? Like, the, the first period where yeah. Max Pacioretty had that chance on the breakaway. Like, I talked to a friend of his, and I won't reveal any names or, like, details of the conversation, but he was like, Max is going to have a terrible series. He cares too much. And whenever he cares too much, he gets in his own head. I was like, okay. And, like, I don't think he's been terrible, but it's those plays where he had the puck clear in the slot, and instead of shooting, he went to pass. Max Pacioretty, don't pass in the slot. What are you doing? If he would have just shot that, he probably could have sneaked it through Petrie and got a shot on goal. Maybe even beat Price. He's got a wicked wrister, right? One of the best in the league. So it's it's that kind of stuff. Great players can get in their own heads. And Mitch Marner will eventually figure out the playoffs. He will. Will it be with the Leafs? I don't know. Well, I mean, you say he will, but here's Pacioretty, and he's not Marner's age. You no, but look, I mean? at he's had, this is a different situation, right? He's had a great playoffs up to this point. That's true. Right? So, and I think a lot of his playoffs that uh, people rag on him in, in Montreal. So I just love his face. Oh sorry, my sorry. God, he's so crazy. Incredible player, too. But also not having a great playoffs the last couple series here, Mark Stone. I was wondering if that was just me. I was watching game two. Like, well, I didn't know the point game. production standpoint anyway. I think he's, he brings enough that it's hard to really criticize Stone at any point. But yeah, Patch Reddy in, in Montreal, like, he got criticized for bad playoffs, but it was like, who else is going to score on that team? Everybody knows that they're going to go to Patch Reddy, so easy to shut down. And also, he played multiple series with, like, a, uh, one of my things, separated shoulder. Mm-hmm. Like, Literally, uh, 2013 against Ottawa, the first game, the Canadians lost. Lars Eller to concussion. Brian Gionta blew his bicep, like his bicep tore, which had uh, torn earlier that season as well. Uh, the season before. Uh, then uh, it was like his bicep disconnected. I was like, oh, okay, was there okay, okay. Like crazy surgery. Yeah, and, and then Pacioretty blew his shoulder and Price blew his groin, all in the first game of the series. And everyone was like, oh, that team needed to be blown up and changed and they did change a lot in that season, but uh, it was, it all came down to one game where like everybody got hurt. Berkshire. Words matter. I know words matter. Okay. Um, Hey, we have some serious questions from the chat. Um, producer drew Andrew, why do you hate toy story? Now I'm intrigued. Oh, cause I, I posted my top five Pixar films and toy Story was nowhere to be seen. I don't hate toy story. I just don't, I don't get the love for it. It never spoke to me. What are your top five? Uh, I had Coco, Up, Inside Out. Uh, what else did I have on there? The Incredibles and Wally. Okay, so I haven't seen Coco and I haven't seen Wally. So oh my God. I haven't seen Wally or Coco. You got to get on that. I'll have to take your word for it. I'm sure I'm about to watch the universe worth of kids programming over the next few years. Just um, wait until Leo is a toddler, then watch Inside Out and feel how hard you cry. Oh, so I've already watched it twice. So we'll... it gets much worse. <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Max asks, "Is Andrew a milk before cereal guy?" So we had this conversation with CJ. Do you put the cereal in and then the milk like a normal person? Cereal in first, always. Good, good. Thank God. Oh, thank you. I got a snack too. Oh, what'd you get? Blueberry bar. That's homemade. Yeah, my wife's the best baker in the world. Oh my god. That's amazing. Okay, uh, the game's going to come back up. But there's the game. We came back up. Um, Liam, should so this is based off the giveaway that led to Vegas' first goal. Should Eric Stahl even be in the lineup? I mean, it's that fourth line has been a part of so many big key moments for this team. And when they're in the offensive zone, they are incredible. The forechecking, they're able to roll out the cycle game, like Corey Perry specifically. Like I've never seen a player as old as Corey Perry, just like 
make a decision where he's like, I'm just going to skate into that guy's elbow with my face to make this play. <laughs> I'm like, okay. As somebody who's made fun of Corey Perry his whole career, I now grudgingly respect him. And from watching this gear, like he's just such a hard as nails guy, and Stahl has been a part of that. But that line, when it's outside the offensive zone, is straight up bad. And that's something that I think the Canadians need to manage a little bit better. If you took Eric Stahl out of that line and brought in Jake Evans if he's healthy, I don't think they lose a lot. So maybe, but it's also like, what a freak mistake to to make a decision over a guy who's got, I think, like seven assists in the postseason and a goal. I think you can usually, like, I understand the question, and it's not like it's the first time it's I've seen it be asked in this postseason, but like you could probably count on Eric Stahl to not do that. Yeah. <laughs> More often. In a normal, so. yeah. yeah. He probably won't do it again. Uh, Christina did... That Woggle wake the Habs up. And they've got, what, two shots since then? And just one went in, so probably not. <laughs> uh, zero, actually. I believe it was the fifth shot, and they're at five shots. So Okay, so they've got one shot and one goal since then, so no. <laughs> in, in Christina's defense, that was actually sent a few minutes ago. Yeah. I mean, I think they're playing a little bit better. But I, yes. Oh my god, 25 to 5 is about as big a shot discrepancy as I've seen in these playoffs. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What is it with this happening to Vegas in the third round? Because this happened last year with Demko and the Canucks, right? Was that that was the second round, wasn't it? Because they faced You're right. Dallas in the third round. You're right. Sorry, there's been so much hockey the last 12 months, whatever. It's not least trivia, so Steve doesn't know it. It's exactly true. <laughs> that is exactly true. No, it's just... You, you know what uh, drove it home for me today? How Just how unbelievably much hockey there's been. With Dom Ducharme not being able to be the head coach tonight, the Montreal Canadiens are on their fourth head coach since September. Yeah, because Kirk Muller stepped in while Claude Julien was out. Yes, and then Julian gets fired, then Ducharme comes in, and now tonight. It's, oh my god, I, I, I just can't believe, like, so what? what's that, nine months? Four head coaches with an opportunity to coach the most historic franchise in the sport. That's, uh, that's, that's just wild. That's that wild. Is totally crazy. It's a lot of, it's a lot of change. I mean, part of it's, you know, like, just short term, but this is weird that, this team for so long under Bergevin had just one coach, right? Like, and yep. through thick and thin many times where maybe deserved to get fired, stuck around. And then Claude Julien, he had a long tenure as well. You know, not a ton of overall success in that tenure, but uh, I think he was doing the right things. A lot of people who criticize Julien, I think, are completely off base. The, the team just flat out wasn't built very well. But... Yeah, to have that much turnover in one calendar year and less is pretty crazy. Uh, we do have... So apparently the chat is freaking out asking you to share your snacks. <laughs> is it just... The, yeah. yeah. So what... Is there anything special about it? Like, is it vegan or... No, no. It's definitely not vegan. It's just... It's like frozen blueberries. And you want me to get my wife to come on and explain it? <laughs> Does she want to come on and explain it? I don't know. Fish, do you want to say what it is? She says, okay. I think she's snacking too. So. I don't know. It's up to you. You, you. You're on live, I should say. This is true. Why don't we go crazy? Yeah. If she's comfortable coming on live and talking about the, what is it, a blueberry t- square? It's a, a blueberry bar. Here, you want to talk into the mic? Uh, Hi. That's too high. Nope. Yeah, talk. Hi. I, I, I hate to be the reporter who yeah. says talk about okay. But talk about the blueberry Me too, bar. Steve. Me too. She says, talk about the blueberry bar. Oh, okay. She? Yeah, Steve. Steve says. Uh, it's a blueberry bar. It's like a pie. Flat and rectangular. So, like, crumbly cookie pie base, and then pie filling, and then pie crumbly bit on top. It's and there you have it. Kitchen. Everything is. Yeah, Smitten Kitchen's good stuff. Thank you. Please continue. That's, that's wonderful. Thanks. Kish, everybody. Thank you, Kish. That was Kishanda, uh, my wife. Kishanda. Uh, thank you. 
<laughs> what the hell, chat? Guys, honestly. Um, we got to bring what no normal broadcast would ever bring. That's what we got to do. Yeah. Snack, recipes, live while watching hockey. You can't beat that. I'll so grab a beer. I don't know. <laughs> um, funny guy says, Game 7, Price or Vasilevsky in your net? Who do you choose? No flurry, love? We're watching a Golden Knights game. What the? Okay. Price or Vasilevsky? How old is Price in this situation? Is it current? Now. Now? Tomorrow. I think I, I'd go with Vasilevsky. I, I'm a big booster of Price's whole career, but I, I think just the youth, it, it helps a lot. And there, There's some limitations in Price's game that have developed due to like continual injury in his lower body that... I think prevent him from being the peak of what we saw of his career. Like if you ask me like price in like 2014, 2015 versus Vasilevsky now it's price with a bullet. Like I think price at his peak is probably the best golden era I've ever seen. Um, I, yeah, sorry. So I was, I was reading the questions, but also carry price for the hall of fame. Doesn't seem like a hot take at all, but I, I don't think I've, seen a goalie in his 20s that I was so confident in saying he's going to make the Hall of Fame. We're, we're watching the early stages of Andre Vasilevsky work his way into the Hall. Because he is there's Henrik Lundqvist, right? And yeah. there was a period where I thought he was either the best or maybe second best behind Price for a period of time. No matter how much the Rangers won or lost, no matter how much personal hardware he got, Game in and game out, you knew he was going to be the better goalie in net every single night. To me, that's Vasilevsky. Yeah. I mean, Vasilevsky has had a couple of down years that have been hidden by how good Tampa Bay is, but he is incredible just as an athlete. I think Lundqvist is the guy who, like, Price had a higher peak than Lundqvist, but his peak was shorter. Lundqvist is like the best goalie of the last generation overall because he was able to extend that peak so long. And even last year where his numbers weren't that great and, you know, he's dealing with heart issues. If you account for what the Rangers were allowing in terms of scoring chances while he was out there, he was still solid. So like he, he was just great way into his late thirties. And I have so much respect for him as a goaltender. He just, the longevity is unfathomable. Uh, I would still, I hope he plays. I still hope he plays. So do I. It's. I was hoping that he would get that comeback this year, but I, I was so heartbroken when, that's a horrible phrase actually, but when his, uh, oh, when he had the, uh, flare up at the end of the year there when he was practicing and he couldn't come back, that was just, it sucked. Yeah, but he tried. They, it looks like they took all the precautions. I'd rather him be safe, you know, yeah, more than sure. anything else. Yeah, it's just like what goes through his mind, you know. I'm sure that he was still confident and that he could find a way. But I, when you do everything right and something still happens, it's got to burn you a little. Physicality picking up here in this game. Yeah. Um, so someone is a really good question from Tom. Why do the Habs only have five shots? What are they doing wrong? Is it something they're doing wrong or is Vegas doing something right? Hmm. Is my addition to that question. I think Vegas is doing something right, but also they've adjusted to what the Canadians do, right? Like, you see the Canadians like to dump it in and forecheck and get on the cycle, and Vegas just hasn't allowed them that. So now they're trying to carry it in a lot more, and they're just not having a lot of success because I think as much as the Canadians can be a speedy team... Oh, here we go. The Canadians can be a speedy team. The Vegas Golden Knights' back end is so fast and so big and so mobile. They're just really hard to break through, and the Canes are just struggling there. They're going to have to create more odd man situations, I think, in order to uh, take advantage in this game. And that could be something like if the Golden Knights start pushing really hard again, because they haven't been pushing much either. Like the shots have stayed Not recently. stagnant. Yeah. You know? This second half of the period, it's high paced, but nobody's getting real shots. So if they start pushing again, maybe the Canadians can start to getting some counterattack chances, but I think they need that tonight. They just haven't found a way to get through the Golden Knights neutral zone. Disrespectful from the chat. Julianne, uh, excuse me, my grandma could win a game playing goalie f with that Tampa Bay Lightning defense. <laughs> I don't think so, Julian. Not against the Islanders. Oh! Oh. Wow. oh my god, that kid's so good. <laughs> How did they let him have so much space there? Because he's Cole Caulfield, and it's not about letting him have space, it's he just, just takes it. Takes it. it. 
Oh my god, this guy's he's so good. He's, he's got so that instinct instinct for finding the dead spot, hey? Yeah. Was everyone's freaking out right now. Oh breakaway! Where is it? Oh my god. Okay. We got our wish. It's picking up again. Yeah, here it goes. Ooh, big, big hit. hit. This is there. playoff hockey. Like, this is what I expect. Um, oh, Furious George, not related to this game, or unless it is, because these two teams seem to be in on everybody. Where do you see Dougie Hamilton going? Oh, good question. I mean, every big UFA goes to Vegas, right? So, <laughs> Vegas, they've got no space on D, but may as well slot him in there. I'm, I think that the whole thing with Carolina is they're just going to let things cool down a little bit, and he's going to stay in Carolina. I think he's he's happy there. I, I don't see a point in him moving. Uh, unfortunately for the Steve Dangle podcast, I don't think he's going to the Maple Leafs. It's just how, how many big contracts can you fit in? Well, how many big contracts? And also, he's at a stage in his career where he probably wants to win. And I said this on the podcast, if you want to win, you don't go to Toronto. I mean, what have they proved? Yeah, I mean, I think that might depend on your confidence level, right? Like, do you think you can be the piece that takes them over the edge? Because that's another thing. I think there's something to the idea. Like, I think part of the reason that John Tavares signed there is, like, the idea of him being the guy oh! that brings the Stanley Cup to Toronto. Yeah, that was a brutal hit. So, and and Vegas... That created the, the breakaway. Whoa. And so no the call. reason I didn't react to that, and that's the penalty. Unbelievable wow. penalty. This wow. series has been brutal for that. So I saw the fan I saw the fans freaking out. The reason I thought they were freaking out is I don't remember who it was, Lekkonen, uh yep. tripped over that stick. And yeah, I thought it was on the fan- same play. Yeah, I th- I thought the fans thought he was tripped, but he just tripped over a stick. I didn't see that. I mean, that's a hit from behind. I mean, if they're going to call the one on, uh, was it Armia in the first period there? Was it Armia or Weber? No, it was Armia, I think. Where it was like a one-arm push to the side of the ribs, and they're like, oh, it's hitting from behind. Like, okay. <laughs> That's pretty bad. I mean, Ducharme had the great quote. Um, you know, Elliot Freeman and Jeff Merrick were talking on 31 Thoughts about manipulation of the officials. And... Trots and DeBoer try to flatter them. And yeah. Charm did sort of the same thing because he was asked about it. And he's like, no, I thought Vegas played a clean game and he didn't rise to it. Tonight, you can't say that. If you do, it's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's it's not it won't be Ducharme, game. right? Yeah. Well, so whoever says it, you know what? Whoever goes out there, I guess it's uh, Luke Richardson. Go all out. What are they going to do? You're not the head coach next game. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know how well, long. Yeah, it could be Charm longer, but yeah. yeah. That's... I read something earlier today saying that because he's had both his uh, Pfizer shots that Ducharme is unlikely to be held out for like an extended period. But who knows? We're, this is an unprecedented time. It really, you know what? I've heard that too often, but you're right. Yeah, um, kind of. everyone's kind of sick of hearing that, eh? But it's, again, here we are still in these unprecedented times. Vegas 0 for 3 on the power play with five shots. Um, so for clarity there, he does have both shots, and people are like, well, how the hell did he get it still? Uh, he, his second shot was less than two weeks ago. Yeah. That's from Dr. Dangle. Um, and also, you can still test positive and catch it after being vaccinated. The point of vaccination is not necessarily no, in, no catching it. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Fee's reaction there really threw me. It's, it's just that you don't get super sick, right? So, like... If you have both shots, you can still catch it, a, I like theoretically, but you won't get super sick. You won't be hospitalized. You don't have a chance of dying. So that's the the most important thing. So I'm surprised we haven't seen this yet. May ask, is are the Habs struggling tonight? Does does that have something to do with the fact that Ducharme is not behind the bench? Definitely could be. I mean, I think Ducharme has been a lot better in the playoffs than he has than he was in the regular season, but uh, his in-game adjustments haven't been very good. Like, he hasn't been able to get the Canadians going if they start out on the wrong foot. So maybe they would have started bad anyway and just continued along, but uh, I, I guess there's something to that. 
I think Alex Burroughs is kind of like the raw raw guy on the bench, right? So you kind of look to him to to get things going. I'm surprised they haven't called a timeout at any point. Like when they, I guess they tied it up right away, so it doesn't really matter. Right. Yeah. Get get something. I I would expect you have to think in the third period they're going to give a lot more than this. Wasn't it the Rangers who they lost Vino for the game and they ended up winning like nine two? I don't remember. That would have been a few years ago, right? No, it was this year. It was this season. Oh, Vino's coach of the Flyers. Or no. Quinn. Yeah, right. No, the, oh, what was it? I can't remember. I, I, I feel like the Rangers were involved. Maybe the Flyers were involved. I don't know. I don't know. There, there was a game this season where someone lost their head coach. We were like, oh, they're going to die. And they friggin' ended up scoring nine goals. I want to say Zabanajad had a big game. I want to say it was the Rangers against the Flyers. Okay. This Habs penalty kill, man. They're aggressive, eh? They're, they're aggressive. They don't let you get across the blue line. It's perfection. Yeah, this is why a lot of people who were kind of clamoring for the Canadians to bring in uh, Thomas Tatar, and I'm, I'm with that. I think he really needs to get in games. He's too good to be sitting out, honestly. But uh, a lot of people were all over Paul Byron before last game. And saying, like, oh, well, he's the guy. He hasn't scored since game one against Toronto. Get him out of there. But, like, he's a big part of that penalty kill. And he, I think what Paul Byron brings that a lot of people don't realize is he doesn't score a ton of goals, but the goals he scores, very few players in the league can score those goals, right? It's all about speed to burn, getting chances that, like, most people just won't catch the puck. And those rare situations can come up big in games, as we saw in game two. Uh, Shane with a question that I'm sure you're going to love I don't know if you're one of those guys who loves these style of questions or hates them rate the Habs power play on a scale of 1 to 10 ooh uh, regular season like a 0 uh, in the playoffs <laughs> in the playoffs I mean they started out just as bad but uh, things really changed at the end of that Toronto series I think Cole Caulfield being a part of the unit with Toffoli and Nick Suzuki like Suzuki, when he's on, is just a power play killer. Uh, right now, I think their power play is chugging along really well. So uh, maybe like a seven and a half. It's seven and a half. That's good. Yeah, it's good. It's not bad. I like it that. actually feels threatening again, as opposed to the regular season. We're like, oh, there goes the momentum. It's a power play. Right. Well, that's that's how it started to feel. I was about to say, that's, that's how it felt for three months uh, in Toronto. <laughs> It's uh, just not a good way to be. Well, it's been like five years for the Canadians that that's been the case. Like pretty much since Andre Markov retired, they're like, what? Well, we have no one to pass it to Shea Weber to take a big shot. So we're just going to slowly pass it to Shea Weber to take a big shot and never learn anything. Do you think there's a tendency in organizations, like when you have a guy who is a staple for so long, like Andre Markov, do you think there's a tendency in organizations to try to find just a new version of him rather than completely adjust? I mean, I, I, in a way, I think the Canadians might have drafted uh, Mikhail Sergachev with that idea. And then quickly mm. were like, uh, let's get Jonathan Drouin instead. But uh, I don't know. I think the, the main thing that I see is not necessarily once that player leaves. It's when the game changes on you and you don't adjust. And you're like, well, let's just get this player to continue doing what they're good at, which they're still good at but the game has moved past. Like Shea Weber, his shot's not any worse than it ever was. Like It's still incredible. It's the best shot that any defenseman has in the league, but he's not as mobile as he used to be, so you need to get him, you know, to get him in better position. You're now taking a risk where people can beat him down. And point shots just aren't it on the power play anymore. They haven't been for a really long time. And when you're constantly going back up to get your defenseman to get all the shots, I think you're passing up better opportunities, even if your defenseman is better at shooting than everybody else's. It was it was funny to see Vegas's uh, success with the point shots in uh, the first game because I, I shouldn't have this thought, but I was like, oh, old school. <laughs> yeah. Like that that used to be all it was. You just get someone with a big bomb at the point, Al McKinnis, you know, something like that, and, and it goes in. Uh Brent asks Con Smythe predictions. Ooh, Braden Point. Braden Point's winning that thing. He should have won it last year. 
guy, eh? He's, he's such a good player, man. He is. I mean, I'd give it to Nikita Kucherov, but, you know, he cheated. <laughs> You're bitter? No, no, not at all. Honestly, I think all power to the Lightning for finding a way around that. And I think that me, like there might have been a little bit of sketchiness to it at the end of the season there where Kucherov probably could have gotten some games. But at the same time, nothing about that injury timeline was actually out of the ordinary. It just Ooh. worked out incredibly well for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And they were able to just coast into fourth in their division and not worry about it. Uh, McNabb has got bloodlust tonight. That was another giant hit at the blue line there. Um, we'll let you go in intermission. There's Vegas getting a call finally. Um, is that allowed? Uh, apparently. Apparently. Well, okay. that Don't it ruin it now. They're going to go and ruin this with coincidentals or something dumb. Did you see Edmondson had him and then he, the ref came over and he put his hands <laughs> he just started laying fists into Edmondson's face. Oh my god, man. Uh, the refs have really got to stop getting guys hurt. Because that's what they're doing. Well, I... I mentioned on my podcast this week that, like, VAR is coming to the NHL. They can oppose it all they want, but they need refs off the ice who can make more calls because it's just ridiculous. And the league is going to resist change as long as they can, but this is a joke. Like, look at that. Trip. Hit with the, the puck. Like, you're not going to call any of that? I guess he got the puck first. Still, that's penalty. That's a penalty now. It doesn't matter if you get puck first. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's it does it affect possession? Is where yeah, yeah. Does it affect? Well, like the uh, the too many men missed call between the Lightning and the Islanders that uh, the Trotz was complaining about. Oh, where I think it was like Andre Palat's goal, and they had seven guys on the ice, but only four of them were in the offensive zone, and none of the guys who were like near the bench were involved in the play at all. That kind of stuff. I'm like, I I don't care. I don't care. Like, it doesn't affect the play whatsoever. I get that. I understand that. I also get why Trotz is mad. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the rules are as they are. Yeah. The, imagine that. The rules yeah. are as they are. Imagine that. So All here we are. In the National Hockey League. Who does that? I don't know. I think it's silly. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. Andrew Berkshire has been absolutely wonderful. Has he not? Chat. Give it, a, give it, put, put blueberry, put blueberry in the chat to honor Andrew Berkshire. There it is. One more time. As soon as we're out of here. Look I didn't want to eat it on stream and just be like spitting stuff into the mic. And you could have done it. You I could, know, but I'm, I'm not uh, Adam Wilde eating on podcast. He really is the worst, right? <laughs> no, but he's also living the dream. He's I... also like the best podcast host of all time. So. Of all time. And I I was, uh, during the first round series, I was having a bunch of carrot muffins and everything. I got to bring those back. I need carrot muffins in my life. Everyone does. Dude, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for hooking us up with someone who could be a potential guest in the future. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. I can't wait to watch that stream. Yeah, well, I hope it happens. We're trying to make it work. Andrew Berkshire, uh, what's your Twitter for everybody? At Andrew Berkshire, very creative. Really difficult, really difficult. Well, if you can somehow find that, everybody, there he is. Uh, dude, thanks uh, so much for joining us. We'll be back for the third period, before the beginning of the third period, on Watch a Leafs Game with Steve Dangle. I'm Steve Dangle. This has been Andrew Berkshire, 1-1, heading into the third Vegas and the Habs.
It's Habs, you idiots, not Leafs. Hi, Steve Dangle here. Welcome back to watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. I got a I got a DM on Twitter as I very quickly checked my phone. That said I said Leafs when I was saying bye to Berkshire. Can you all hear the music or is that just me? We're just keeping it. Just, no, there it goes. <laughs> well, I was enjoying it. I wasn't chirping you. Okay. Well, now I can hear myself. Uh, um, one sec. Producer Stu, I can hear myself. Anyway, I don't know if you can hear me. I do have teams muted. Sorry. Um, hey. Everybody, we need another bet. I know I didn't do so hot on the first goal bet, so I'm hoping to make up for it. Here we go. Sports Interaction, providing competitive odds on all sports. Sports Interaction is Canada's odds maker, 19 plus, of course, and play responsibly. What is going to be the highest scoring period? So the second period obviously had two goals. Third period, we don't know. Or is it going to be a draw? So could the third period, for example, also have two goals? I have a hard time believing this game is going to end 2-1. I'd put money on the third. I think the third is going to be high flying. I don't think it's going to be locked down at all. We're starting on a power play. I think it's going to open right up. I'm going to say the third. What say you? Head over to Sports Interaction. Good luck. Sorry, just communicating something. Um, why don't we do a game? Hmm? Would you like to do Steve wearing pants? Yes. Look how quickly that came up. I'm going to step off camera. I Am I wearing pants? Is Steve wearing pants? On this edition of Watch a Habs Game with Steve Dangle, you have... 10 seconds chat leave your answer 10 9 8 yes i am all caked up on a thursday afternoon the sun is shining look at that i got jeans on because it's cold in the basement we got the air conditioning on oh and you might be like, oh, is Steve wearing leaf socks? Jerome Aginla, actually, to match the shrine and also the name of my dog. So, everybody. Why don't we do some of your questions before the third period starts? Andrew, is this Berkshire? Asked, carrot muffins or blueberry bars? I'm, I'm still going to say carrot muffins. Blueberry bars can be very tasty. And I have not tried Kishandas. Which, rude, by the way, that I haven't been invited. Oh, it's a pandemic, right? But the thing about blueberry bars or like any of those kind of bar treats, very messy. Did I say it's Thursday? I got a text from producer Drew. It's Friday, you donut. What 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 does that mean? I'm sweet. That's that's how I choose to interpret this. Emily, Steve, I need a snack. Suggestions. Hard to go wrong with chips, isn't it? You don't want to go with chocolate. It's too late. I didn't realize until later in life that uh, chocolate is caffeinated. I did not realize this. You know how I found out? This is this is terrible. I'm I was way too far into adulthood. I'm ashamed, but I was in a theater watching Star Wars Rogue One. 
and I was having friggin' heart palpitations. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not that into this movie, am I? But it's I had like two coffees that morning before the movie, and also in the theater I got a bunch of chocolate. <laughs> and by the time that little, uh, by the time the the new Death Star or whatever, or no, it's not the new Death Star; it's the original. Before they fired on that kind of sandy planet. I can't remember which one. I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I know. StarCraft, yes. My life for Iyer. Uh By the time that, season, uh, that, that scene happened, I, I was just about ready to jump through my seat. Through my seat. That makes sense. We're going to keep saying that. Oh, earlier I promised you. Um, because the Vegas Golden Knights and the Montreal Canadiens are currently trying to punch their ticket to the Stanley Cup Final. Do you want to see a ticket to the Stanley Cup Final? There it is right there. That is Pecorine. Let me try to lower the... There you go. There you go. That is Pecorine there. This was for the 2017 Stanley Cup Final between the... You can see we were sitting very high up. It was very expensive to get into that building. Uh, this was for, I believe, Game 3 of the 2017 Stanley Cup Final against the Pittsburgh Penguins. If I'm not mistaken, Nashville crushed them that game. Oh, and I also mentioned, so I went to Game 1 of the 2016 Stanley Cup Final. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins taking on the San Jose Sharks. Pittsburgh won, and that was the Benino, Benino, Benino goal. But! Because I was at the game, I didn't know that. And what one of the really cool things was, was watching people slowly discover it, like, in public. Like, there are people, like, you know, tapping their buddies in the shoulder and uh, showing them, showing them, hey, check this out. And I watched Hunter Ryan Singh become basically this, this phenomenon in Pittsburgh uh, right before my eyes. It was very cool. Ooh, Greg says, any trade trees you excited about? I've tried really hard to not think at all. No, uh, too hard about trade trees. We're going to do a bunch. Uh, Stanley Cup final feels like a bad time to commit to it. I think sometime between the end of the Stanley Cup final and the beginning of the draft. Draft slash expansion draft. We'll try to do a bunch. Any that I'm excited about? I don't know. I like the uh, I like the surprise. So we do. Uh, I think I showed it when I was uh, filling in on Tim and Friends. We did do a Jack Campbell one. For any Leaf fans who happen to be watching, or Kings fans. Here we go, the beginning of the third period. Shots 30 to 8. Unbelievable. But it's a tie game. And Montreal is on the power play. Hillary Knight asks Steve, favorite, favorite Star Wars movie? Um, Star Wars fans are going to hate this. It's Rogue One. Because I'm not a huge Star Wars guy. And Rogue One answered a lot of questions for me, and you didn't need to have really watched the older movies to get it. They certainly helped, and like I had a base understanding of the franchise, for God's sake. But I felt like it was the perfect movie that, if you had never watched them before, it's a great way to get into the series. The Golden Knights are able to clear. 45 seconds to work for the Montreal Canadiens here. A minute into the third period of this game three. Oh. <laughs> John says, did the puck... Cross the line, game six, 2004. Yes. I'm going to say yes. The Calgary Flames should have won the Stanley Cup. Tampa fans, I'm sorry. We'll never know. I mean, you won, you won the Stanley Cup. Uh, you can only win based on 
the rules of the day and the technology of the day. I think they made the right call because you cannot definitively say that puck crossed the line. But if you're asking me in my heart of hearts, do I think it did? Yeah, I do. Follow Celsius journey on Instagram and Twitter. But who cares? Don't miss the 2021 Flames fans. <laughs> Beyond them, who else cares? Tuesday, June 22nd at 8, 8.30 in Newfoundland on CBC, CBC Gem, CBC Radio 1. Shark, which Habs jersey <laughs> will you order if the Habs win the cup? I've always liked their white one. So it's their road one now. It used to be their home jersey. So when I was a kid, it was their home jersey. The red one's so good, though. If I had to order a Habs jersey, it'd be a red one. And I think I'd probably get Gallagher. Whoa! Did not expect a goal like that. Alex Petrangelo with a snipe. But all the shots carry Price's face tonight. All the saves. That is uh, not one I expected to go in. And you can tell by my reaction there. Oh, that's just so, so ordinary. Carey Price this time, though, like, oh, obviously, it's Alex Petrangelo. He gets paid the big bucks for a reason. But, like, that's an unscreened shot. And those just don't beat Price. Oh, and he knows it, too. Those shots just do not beat Carey Price. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. How good has Alex Petrangelo been? Now, the Habs tied it up quick when Vegas went up one nothing. Can they do it again? Oh, they almost do. They scored 38 seconds after the first Vegas goal. And a scoring chance right off the hop. And now it'll be interesting here. Habs have eight shots on the game. How do they generate offense? And if you're Vegas, what do you change? Do you crawl into a shell? Why would you do that? You're out shooting them 31 to 8. Just keep doing what you're doing. And adjust to the pressure. See, I told you there'd be more goals in the third. Three minutes in, we already got one. I wonder if Pete DeBoer will stick with some different looks, but he comes right back to Carlson, Marcheseau, and Smith. So that was just a shift together. That's a shot on goal, but it's not much of one. I didn't think Petros was much of one. It's a clean look for him, but boy, I really expect Carey Price to stop those. I think Carey Price expects Carey Price to stop those. Look at that save! Was loose in front to redirect that. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. This is why we watch hockey, man. You just never know. Here's Jonathan Marcheseau in without a shot on goal in game three. Got it to Theo. Down for Smith. Yeah, Vegas is still, they haven't changed the thing. Here's Martinez back to Theodore from Long This is bad news if, if you're a Montreal fan, but here they go. They go the other way. Suzuki losing it a little bit in his feet. That got through Flurry a little bit. Flurry handles that one. It wrecks. Steve, imagine if the Leafs got Petro. What is with all the Leafs stuff? This is watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. Always has been. Potentially always will be. Right now, you got to get some... Uh, Terrell, if the Leafs the are... With just 11 to this you screwed my head up! We've talked about Vegas Terrell says, if they lose the this game 2-1, will it be Price's fault with that goal? Uh, no. No. Who in their right mind... Okay, two things can be true at the same time. It Let's assume the game ends 2-1. Let's say neither team gets a shot for the rest of the game. Let's say the shots end up 34-20. So Vegas stays still, Habs get eight more shots. Two things can be true. One, Price should have had that. Two, his team let him down. If you only score one goal, I don't think you can look at your goalie and say anything. Here's a pack of Petrangelo. This is his first goal from game two. Here's his second goal from game two. And this thing, I mean, 
That's, you know what that is? That's a video game goal. That used to be automatic. It's much harder in the games now because I think they figured it out and took it out. But if you were the right-handed shot, and I know this because the character I used was always right-handed. Here's something for Vegas. Oh! Oh! How don't you marry that? They still got it, though. Shut up, Steve. There's a game going on. To keep the Canadians a shot away, Theodore sends it wide. Weber after I think the they're going to get out of danger here. Running around a little bit, but they'll get it. They'll get it. And they get out of the zone. Almost got picked off there by Stone. Wow. By the way, this might be dumb, but I think at some point they're going to crack down on tape. Oh. Oh! No penalty? Oh, I'm a bit surprised by that. I'd like another look at it, but you can see the hands flying up. I'm a bit surprised. 35 to 13 are the shots. Habs obviously getting more offense here. Oh, I want to see this chance again. I thought that maybe could have been a trip. Here's that two on one. Oh, he just doesn't really get it, Tuck. Carey Price slides across. Able oh, no. He got it. He didn't place it great, but he got it. Carey Price with the stop. And who was that, Perry? And he just kind of fell. And you know what? That's a bit of a reputation thing, too. If that's another player, who knows? Maybe they call it. But Perry uh, does have a bit of the clear tape skates in those situations. Hab should have had more power plays in this game, though. I was too many things have happened. When Berkshire was on, there was a check from behind. I don't remember who it was, but it was pretty bad. And the point he made: um, if you're going to call the one that got called in the Habs, you got to call that. Oh, tipped high. Golden Knight lead, but it could have been two, but not for the showstopper saved by Gary Price. So we head to commercial break. Watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. A lot going on. This game's pace is picking up, and I'm feeling pretty good about my prediction that they were uh, the third period will be the highest scoring game, highest scoring period. Ooh, Ryan asks, will Seattle make the playoffs in year one? No. <laughs> I'm going to say, ah, yes. Yes, and here's why. Uh, I know expansion teams are supposed, supposed to stink. I just don't think they're going to. I think they're going to be able to pick some really, really good players. I, In fact, I think they're going to be able to pick better players than Vegas got. What v made Vegas so good was the side deals, and I think those will be available to Seattle as well. You know, all oh, teams have learned their lesson. No, they haven't. It's the National Hockey League. GMs make mistakes all the time. And the pandemic and the flat cap flipped the script and changed everything. You're telling me there aren't going to be teams begging on their hands and knees trying to get Seattle to take some of their bad deals or if they're not even bad, just expensive. Mm -mm. I, I think there's a good chance Seattle makes it year one. I do. I really do. Uh, Allison, Steve, I love the stream. Is there a charity I could donate to to show my support? Well, thank you. Um, my default charity is Easter Seals. So I'm going to say Easter Seals Ontario. It's a charity that helps out kids with physical disabilities, and they helped out my family when I was younger. Uh, my sister Rachel, as you know, or, well, as you know if you know my story, or her story, she was uh, born about four months premature. She has autism, cerebral palsy. My family needed some help growing up, and Easter Seals was there. Love them. 
And uh, we usually get on the ice uh, for a charity tournament, the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic, every year. It's basically the reason I started to learn how to play hockey. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get on the ice this year, but we raised a lot of money. I don't remember the exact amount. It was over a quarter million dollars for Easter Seals, Ontario. Feels good. William, thoughts on all the top paid players being out of the playoffs? Uh, it's interesting, you know, because no one brings up Kucherov. Price is the only one in this conversation. Um, I don't know. Like, Sagan missed almost all the season. That's a tough one. Matthews and Marner, I mean... I don't, they were the ones who didn't perform. The whole argument against paying players that much is you can't surround them with talent. All the talent around those guys performed. Varus was injured. Oh! The point that was made by James Myrtle when he came on my podcast, and it's a good one, is having players who make that much make you more susceptible to injury or make you more vulnerable to injury. That's a, is that not a penalty on Flurry? I'm not going to lie. I don't understand the trapezoid rule. Video games have ruined me. I thought if your skates were in the trapezoid, you get the penalty. I guess it's the puck. There's always that one goalie in EASHL who takes too many penalties. White Cloud could have had an own goal there, and that would have been a uh, huge dang it. By the way, we had a guest when it happened, but that Eric Stahl giveaway, that's a dang it. And that's a huge hit from Joel Armia. Uh, David, can Dangle show us his French? Uh, no. <laughs> I took French until grade 10. I got a 60. <laughs> I did not do well. And I forgot it all immediately. <laughs> like, I took French from, I think it was grade 1 to grade 10. Retained none of it. Like, I can understand individual words well enough that I could, like, read something and be like, oh, I think I know what this says. <gasps> oh, that, oh! Whoa, that was a good chance for the Habs. They still got it. They still got it. Ben Sherratt, good play there to hold the line. Habs with some sustained zone time, which they haven't really had much of in this game. Tuck in a battle with, I think that's Defoli in front. No sick. Hit Caulfield. Caulfield trying to come up with it. And now the Golden Knights get it out. Laura, would you like the North Division to stick around? No. Um, it's a cool idea. It was a cool idea. And it's a unique season. I think it was great. People are like, oh, it was too much of the same team. Well, that, there was an obvious reason for that. Oh! Oh, Flurry's moving. This is probably the Habs' best shift of the game. And here comes Vegas. He's going to get a chance here. Oh, how do you look off Kolasar there? He's right there. Well, I don't know about that, but they still have it. That shot went off Yanmark wide. And Anderson able to drink that out to get a change. Bounce back in by Petrangelo. And his old Blues teammate Edmondson starts the breakout for Montreal. Deneau into Vegas ice. Phil Deneau to the <laughs> Royce, can you grow a Habs playoff beard? I already shaved it. So I could start growing a beard now and it wouldn't be as long as it was when I shaved it. <laughs> I kind of miss it. I kind of think I should have stuck it out for the rest of the playoffs. Enough people told me it looked good that I believed them. It's Put it this way. It's the best it's ever looked, which should give you an idea of how bad it used to look. 
Big part of the game. Next goal is a game changer here. Stone trying to get his first of this series. Gets deflected right in front. Uh... The MX the Risky, the what's the biggest the dang it you've Fleury ever seen? Mark andre Fleury had a pretty good one at the World Juniors. Uh, don't remember what year that was. Was it 2003? Was it 2002? That uh, ridiculous Canada's up in the game on the state, and he goes to pass the puck off his own teammate. I want to say it was Cam Barker. I can't quite remember. Goes in. The states end up going on to win the gold medal. Oh, Oh, did it just hurt my heart? Hurt my heart so much. That was such a collapse, and it was so in the heart of the dead puck era, even though it was junior hockey. I remember hearing about the collapse because we were listening to the game on and off on the radio because we were at school. And we were listening on and off, and someone goes, oh, yeah, the States came back and won. And I laughed at them because I didn't believe them. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah shut up, shut up. And I got home, I see the highlights, I'm like, you, you, this is a joke, you have to be kidding. This is a nightmare! This is a nightmare and I can't wake up. And then I realized I was already awake. It made me very sad. Jacob, Steve, love the stream. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, thoughts on St. Louis letting Petro go to Vegas? Uh, I mean, St. Louis has clearly not been the same. <sighs> I was going to say... Vegas gave Petro a lot of money, obviously, and he knew that team was ready to do something special. But it seems to me he knew the right time to pull the shoot on the St. Louis Blues because, boy, they don't look the same. And, you know, people talk about the season that Jordan Bennington had and he struggled a lot. I mean, how much of that is just not having Alex Petrangelo on your team? Paul, I dare you to grow a beard until the Leafs win a playoff series. What, do you want me to look like Dumbledore with the... Only one defenseman for Vegas that ever scored against the Canadiens. Silencio. That's what I say to you, Paul. Way to go, Paul! They have six goals from their blue line. Here in the first three games of this series. Vegas' forwards still have so much more to give in this series. I know they're, oh my God, 37 to 15 is just wild. But like I've noticed Marcheseau with the puck a lot, for example. Never really noticed them be dangerous. Adam, was it painful to take down the Leafs memorabilia for the Canadian stuff? Uh, no. Because, uh, well, I don't want to turn the computer because I'm going to knock over my lights here. But it's just, it's on that wall. And take it down. People think, yo, can you imagine if I took everything down and put other stuff up every time I wanted to change sets? Heck no. I So during the pandemic, I was like, well, I got some time. And I basically redesigned the room to have one massive Leafs wall. Another wall that's mostly dedicated to international play, but not entirely. It's a lot of Canada. There's some American stuff there. Team North America from the World Cup. And then there's another wall that is one, two. It's it's a couple dozen general NHL figures. It's the wall that has gritty on it, if you've been watching my stuff. So, no, it didn't kill me to take the memorabilia down because I didn't. But I can say I haven't worn any for quite some time. We got six and a half minutes to go here. It's 2-1 Vegas. They're out shooting Montreal 37-15. to But believe it or not, this is Montreal's best period um, when it comes to offense anyway. Watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle. Click like, click subscribe, and all that. traffic in the center ice area for the Canadians to... Try and work their way through. Here's Lackanen doing that. Got it to Gallagher. And off oh, producer Stu. I said Leafs game again. Watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. For God's sake. Muscle memory. I'm sorry, folks. I see the teams in front of me. It's muscle memory. I'm sorry. Morgan. Dumbledore do be looking like a whole snack, though. Morgan is down quite bad. 
So down under six minutes to go. You are down catastrophic, Morgan. <laughs> there's, I don't know if there's a potion for that, man. I don't know if there's a, a potion to uh, get you less down bad. Swaggy, who's your favorite uh, Vegas forward? Oh, I like that one. Alex Tuck's pretty entertaining. I do like Jonathan Marcheseau. William Carlson is such a good, like, force. He's a force. But I'm going to say Mark Stone. Oh, I was making a point earlier, but then something happened in the game and I stopped making it. Um, I do wonder if the next crackdown is on tape. Because that dude has got a glob of tape on the butt end of his stick the size of a fist. <laughs> It looks ridiculous, um, but it helps him be one of the better defensive forwards in the game. Helps him be one of the better poke checkers, uh, better at taking the puck away. Henrik Lundqvist is the goalie equivalent of this. The reason he was able to use his stick to poke check basically like a pool cue is he would just have the entire roll of tape on the end of his stick. He couldn't drop it. I think it was Lundqvist. And there's a few other goalies who do it as well. Like, egregiously, I mean. Like, we're talking at least two, three inches of tape on top of the stick. Aaron says, where did you get your chair made? I'm not sure. Uh, I've had this chair for a number of years. It's my original Dangle Leafs jersey. Um, and my wife got it made for a Christmas many moons ago. How many moons ago? I don't know, but I think I still had a buzz cut. I didn't figure out my hair until I was in my late twenties. I need to, I, I apologize for looking like an absolute goof for several years. And right now you might be going, I have a buzz cut. Are you saying I look like a goof? No, I'm saying I look like a goof with a buzz cut. My head is too big and weird shaped to be doing that. And it's covered in moles. It did not look good. And I often ask my wife why she stuck around. Carlson, Marcia, so Smith unit. <laughs> Mr. Bloopy, would you trade Marner for Eichel? Sir, this is a Habs game. <laughs> Bloopy! I assume Bloopy's a sir. I don't know why. You're asking me about my French. Masculin or féminin? I don't know. Um, God, this conversation's getting goofy. I mean, what confuses me so much about an Eichel trade... Because everyone's talking about it. You know, like he's a fully healthy player. He's going to play next season and he's... Oh! Sorry. We're talking about him like he's going to play next season. And he's going to just, just jump right back into being Jack Eichel. But there's so many factors here. He wants to get surgery done. The Sabres don't want him to get surgery done. Is the team that he's going to going to allow him to get the surgery done? How long is he going to be out with the surgery? Is he going to be the same when he gets back uh, from the surgery? I don't think you're going to see a trade like that. Big name player for big name player. I don't, I don't think you're going to see that. I think it's going to be a package of futures. And here could be a chance for Tuck. Just getting it on, getting that face off. If you're the team with the lead, you just want to kill the clock. I don't think that's a bad way to do it. Chris, how many waffles uh, would you eat in one stream? Saw that thread on your Twitter today. Okay, so let me explain that. I think I was talking about this with Julian McKenzie. There was a dude who finished last place in his fantasy football league. So his punishment was he had to spend 24 hours at a waffle house. If you've never been to a Waffle House, they're big in like, I don't know. I went to one in Nashville, for example. Big in the States. They're open 24 hours. So the rule was he had to spend 24 hours, but for every waffle he ate, an hour gets shaved off. And you might be like, oh, that's nothing. I can eat a thousand waffles. No, 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 no. These waffles are the size of your plate. And what bothered me so much about this... Stop from price. What bothered me so much about this thread is he was like, oh, my stomach hurts because he had like five waffles in the first two or three hours, which is dumb. Oh, is that not a trip? Not at this stage in the game, I guess. I thought it was dumb because why would you front load your waffles? You know you're going to be there a while. You pace yourself. 
And then when you hit a certain point, you know you're going to be able to just shave the hours off and leave. That's when you scarf them down. I think you could do a waffle. I think you could comfortably do a plate-sized waffle every 90 minutes would be my strategy. Every 90 minutes for a certain amount of time, then maybe take a couple hours off. At some point, take an extended break. That's when you listen to a few podcasts, read a few articles. And then at the end, you just crush it. Leave it all. Leave it all in the Waffle House. Cody, any, uh, NHL 94 or NBA Jam? What kind of question is that? Actually, NBA Jam, I did spend a lot of time playing that game. Also, Magic Johnson's Fast Break, because I'm old. Really loved Magic Johnson's Fast Break. But I'll say NHL 94. We are under three minutes to go here and watch a... Le- uh, uh, we need a jar! Watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. Vegas still up 2-1. Your questions are on hold until after the third period has concluded. Whether Montreal ties it up or not. Vegas dumping it. We'll see what tonight's head coach, Luke Richardson, does with regards to pulling Carey Price for the extra attacker. Oh, that could have been a big hit on Pacioretty. Two minutes to go. you got to think if they get pressure here, if they get possession. Oh, oh my God! Dang it! Dang it! What a dang it! Oh, my goodness, Flurry! What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Buddy, don't spill your beer. What are you doing? Oh, McPhee looks sick. What happened? That's a dang it. Oh, Mark Andre. Oh, if you're a goaltender, 10, the goal. That dang it that I told you about, Flurry playing the puck at the World Juniors. That happened like a decade and a half ago. Dude, this is game three of a third round Stanley Cup playoff game. That can't happen. You've been playing godlike all night. Your whole team has been playing godlike. Oh my God, that cannot happen. Eric Stahl, you're off the hook. That can't happen. And he, you, what are you doing leaving your net again? You don't get to leave your net for the rest of the night. Are you joking? And just like that, get cozy, everybody. We got a game. It is tied 2-2. I should have told you to select draw for sports interaction because we got two goals. Petro wanted the slash there on Gallagher. The third's not over. There's still over a minute to go. But Vegas so good all night. Shots 39-18. to And Marc-Andre Fleury just blew it. Can they recover and win this game? I don't know. Montreal giveth. Montreal taketh away. Eric Stahl, brutal giveaway leading to Vegas' first goal. After Carey Price has been so good. And then Vegas, just a near picture perfect game all night. And Marc Andre Fleury specifically just pitched it, completely pitched the whole thing away. You can't ask for a better game than Vegas has played, especially without your number one center in Chandler Stevenson. And he just completely duffed it. That's shocking. 20 seconds to go here. If Vegas is going to get an offensive zone draw, they could avoid overtime. Wow, 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 wow. Stanley Cup playoffs are all about moments. Bergevin, he couldn't believe it. That went the way of a guy who Josh Anderson with the goal, one goal in his previous 24 games. I believe his only playoff goal was actually the Habs' first goal of the playoffs. 
in game one against the Leafs. Oh! Was knocked down by Martinez. Dying second. Imagine the Habs win it in regulation here. They still got a second. Uh, Flurry with the stop there. And folks, with the shots 40 to 21 or whatever it ends up being uh, after those last couple saves. Free hockey. We're going to overtime. Game three. Genuinely unbelievable. You asked me the biggest dang it I've ever seen. And I talked about Mark Andre Fleury at the World Juniors. That was a bad one against Colorado. Oh, that, how do you do that? How do you do that? Oh, buddy. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Petrangelo thought he had the game winner tonight. But we go to overtime. I can't believe that. Vegas, Pete DeBoer has uh, a, a Herculean task in front of him right now. Trying to get the attention of the Vegas Golden Knights back. I mean, if if you're them, you still got to feel good about winning this game. Because you've been the better team all night. And I don't think there's a Habs fan that could argue against that. But to ditch it, just absolutely throw it in the bin like that. That is the dang it of the playoffs if the Habs win this game. Shocking. Genuinely shocking. Uh, we got lots of questions here. Uh, Suk says, how could Montreal give up Sergachev? I mean... They would obviously want a mulligan on that one. But you got to remember, they thought they were going to have defense for years to come already. I believe they had recently gotten Petrie. They had recently gotten Weber. I want to say they had also drafted Victor Mete, although I'm not totally sure. And then they get Romanov a couple years later to compensate for it. Like, they needed offense. And they thought they were doing the right thing. Getting Jonathan Drouin. All right, I'm being asked if we can take a break. Uh, because we're heading to overtime, folks. So we're going to take a quick break. But don't go anywhere. Watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. I'm Steve Dangle. We'll be back for overtime.
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Steve Dangle here on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle, and this Habs game is going to overtime. I honestly cannot believe it. What an unfathomable turn of events and the foreshadowing that came before it. Talking about, someone goes, what's the biggest dang it you've ever seen? And the first one that came to mind was Marc-Andre Fleury's screw-up at the World Juniors many, many moons ago, costing Canada a gold medal. Now he's on the Golden Knights. And that happens. I, I honestly can't believe it. Josh Anderson didn't even look happy after he scored the goal. He's got a heart, that guy. It's like he felt bad for Marc-Andre Fleury. We are heading to overtime for the first time in a long time. Uh, let's talk about sports interaction here. We got a bet. It's very simple. Who's going to score in overtime? Montreal still the underdog. Vegas the favorite. Obviously, Vegas out shooting Montreal extremely heavily in this game, even though Montreal is the home team. I still got to think Vegas pulls this off. Surely. Surely. I'm not having as, as strong a night uh, on sports interaction as I did for game two, but I'm going to say Vegas. We'll see. Sports Interaction providing competitive odds on all sports. Sports Interaction is Canada's odds maker. 19 plus. Remember that. And obviously, play responsibly. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We're about to start overtime. Folks, I talked to the producers. And they are allowing something to happen for overtime. But they said I have to do it in a red cup. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are going to pour it. And watch, someone's going to score in the first 15 seconds. Are you serious? That's how you start overtime? Are you nuts? Did you all see what I just saw? That dude one hand chops it into the corner? Come get your man. Someone come get Flower. This guy is on. Oh, he's on one. Oh, no mustache. I got rid of the beard. I, I can't believe that. That was the first thing he thought to do. He's been out of the net to play the puck like three times since allowing that goal. Comes Montreal. I know Fleury's uh, like a vet and everything, but you got to think that rattles a fella. I know there's lots of questions in the chat. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to them. Well, it's not going to be breakneck pace the whole time. Maybe uh, between whistles or something. I'm trying to argue, yeah, Anderson offside. He's upset about that. Yeah, Josh, they're not all going to be easy. Good Lord. Show it again. Show it again. Twist the knife. After regulation, Weber, Sherratt, Petrie riding those ponies quite a bit. Edmondson getting a lot. Gustafson almost nothing. And Merrill. You see why I confused him for Joel Armia? Because they're both getting depth minutes. Check out to take this offensive zone face off has been good tonight. I'm not proud of that joke. Stupid. Luke Richardson makes sure Phil wow. comes out and he's been even wow, 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 wow. I'm still in shock. Of 15 face offs, but this one comes back to stone. No sick on the no first out. line now sick. after Maybe Tuck was there for so long. So no offensive zone draw, it's pretty important. Mark line. Stone out there, the Capitan. Patch are ready. Looks like Holden and White Cloud. So ready against Deneau. Hab's got Deneau out there. That was a bit of a weird face-off. They let it go, though. Stop. If you see me shaking my head periodically, it's because I just can't believe we're here. I can't, I can't, I can't believe that happened. It's not unfathomable to me that the Habs hide it. We're a good team, obviously. But the way that it happened, that, I don't know. I don't know. The foam has dissipated. I can now pour the rest of my beverage. 
into the cup. I'm stunned. I'm still stunned. This is great. That was the hardest part of the pandemic. No hockey. You couldn't just have hockey and a beer. Ricocheted to the Canadian's line and Perry will turn back. Weber across for Petrie. And Allegedly. Perry over the line, knocked away, and a quick counter here for Carrier. William Carrier dashing in, curls back, gets oh. to Martinez, shot blocked. Oh, I don't know about that shot at all. He had an open so guy. Continues to be good in that department. This is what I do as a talentless hack who can't skate. Let's go. Here's what I would have done if I had the talent and training and anything. Price lucky to hold on to that. Goodness gracious. Let's see if we can get something in here. <laughs> Etienne, the Islanders aren't the dang it maker Steve Flurry is. This is going to be his second dang it of the playoffs, I think. He had one against Colorado. Certainly one here. Against the Habs. You just can't allow Trying to think if he had one against Mini. To happen, especially when next goal wins. Tristan, where does Price rank all time? Uh, he hasn't played enough, man. He hasn't played enough. Because um, remember, all those all-time greats, they have a full body of work. Price is, is still being written. And he's missing a Stanley Cup. A Stanley Cup. One. Doesn't have any. And I think in order to be in the conversation, you got to have one. You probably got to have more than one. That's why the conversation is wah, and it's brodeur. And it's the one criticism guys have about Hashik. But most people seem to understand, yeah, but he was on the Sabres. <laughs> Sorry, if you see me doing that, I don't have a tick. I got in a car accident a few years ago. My neck screwed. Sometimes I watch the podcast back and I see myself doing this every five seconds and I'm like, do people think I'm reenacting Thriller? No, my neck hurts. Always. Edmondson behind the net, moves it around. Stone is there for Vegas. Rosek was hooked up there with Weber. Play back to the Canadian's captain, chopped off his stick. It's loose for Stone. Oh, no. Edmondson will lead Montreal. Oh, Stone. Rare opportunity to clear that he flubs. This could be something. No. No. I chose the wrong time to say no. <laughs> That's already still getting the shot off. I was expecting him to get the pass across. Joel Armia. That's a good move. Oh, that's a good stop. Hard into the boards. That's a really good stop from Flurry there. That's a game saver. Habs with pressure here. Oh, no luck for Perry. I'm not going to say redemption because the only way you can redeem yourself after that mistake uh, is to win the game. Ah, uh, I was wondering. Okay, interesting. I was wondering why Ar Armia was so confident to pull that move off. As good as Mark Stone is, he's not a defenseman. So he attacks. Captain, watch out, Flurry DeBoer is sharpening that sword. <laughs> I don't know if it's that bad yet. Again, they win the game, all is forgiven. Kind of laugh about it. Oh, oh, oh. sorry about that, boys. But we won. Took home ice advantage back. We're up 2-1 in the series. We're two games away from the cup final. We're six games away from the cup. Oh, I'm sorry. I think that's a call. I know it's overtime and you're not going to do it. Oh, security's yelling at someone too, I think. Yeah, security. <laughs> security's got to tell that guy to not bang on the glass. I would have to watch it back. Refs have a hard job, man. I'm always like, oh, I got to watch it back. But I think that was, that's a call. First period, that's a call. Regular season, that's a call. 
Man, the Habs are attacking. They're a lot closer to the Habs we saw in the first period last game. Offensive zone draw for the Golden Knights, which I think they will be just plenty happy with. Thank you very much. Cole says, is Flurry just not clutch? I mean, that can't be true. <sighs> Suzuki does go down pretty easy. He does go down pretty easy. Though. Like he just sort of throws his hands up. I'm not sure. I want to look at it a third time. In the moment, it looked like a penalty. On the replay, it didn't. By playoff standards, obviously. The question you always get asked, you know, like, let's say someone gets held. Let's say it's holding. And I'll go, ah, I don't know if that's a penalty. What, that's not holding? Oh, sorry, that's not the question you asked. <laughs> you didn't ask if it's holding. You asked if it's a penalty. And in the playoffs, there's a pretty distinct difference. I think a big problem in hockey is a lot of stuff is just allowed. It makes when they do call penalties a, a frustrating thing. Instead of getting that notion of, oh, finally, I'm often left with that? After all the stuff you allowed, that's what you called? Gallagher to the bench and to Foley back out there. Yeah, a bunch of the comments. What a dive, what a dive. And there's no chance you call the dive. So Perry out to the place of Caulfield. You imagine? In Montreal, they call Suzuki for the dive. Vegas wins. Although that that would require the Habs to allow a... Ooh. That would require the Habs to allow a power play goal, which just isn't going to happen. Their, their, their penalty kill is just unbelievable. This could, this could be something here. This could be the game. This could be the game. I got a feeling. Oh, who is that? That was painful. Yanmark. Oh. I don't know. I just, I was smelling something there. I thought the Habs had a good little look. Boy, the Habs have really opened up the ice. I don't know if White Cloud's going to win this. Whoa. I love this. This is great. Don't you love this? Oh, there's the... I'm still looking at the bench. Grigor says, pick a player from each team who you think will score. Oh, baby. Oh! Can I say Tavoli? <laughs> Oh! Take it off the angle there and you know what? I, uh, uh, Stone now a hit. I'm going to say Caulfield. And Tuck. Comes up with it. To twist away from it's hard. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. And Perry there to check him. Out comes Stahl. Tafoli's on the move. Sent down the ice and Flurry out. Stall intercepted that. Flurry, Flurry again. Yo, you're banned. You're banned. You're in timeout. Stop it. Stop playing with them. You're not helping. I'm surprised more goalies don't go at me for the whole if you're a goaltender, tend the goal thing. Like, what? I'm helping. I, I just feel like so often the risk reward for playing the puck. Like, usually you're just slightly speeding the puck up towards a guy who's going to get it anyway. Oh, I don't mind playing the puck there. Oh, what happened there? It's a bit of a turnover. Working along the boards, 
Oh, Lekkinen. Lekkinen's alone. He went down and gloves off, heads to the bench. Play continues. Is it just me or do the Habs look like the much, much more dangerous team in this overtime? This could be something. Or the Habs, like these, where, where have these guys been? Oh, Vegas screwed up so hard by allowing that tying goal. This is the most awake the Habs have looked all night. I mean, they bloody should be. It's overtime in a playoff game, but still. Not just the most awake, but the, the best. This is the first time they've looked like the better team for a stretch in this game. Game two, they look like the better team for plenty of it. Tonight, uh, this might be the first actual stretch. There was Tuck. Ah. Good clear. Ice, though. Unless Fleury wants to play it. Go on. Come on, Flower. What did you stop for? Boo. Why am I heckling? Why am I heckling, Flower? I'm not that deep into this beer. Drink. Oh! Oh! Look at him! Oh, man! Was that the stick or the puck that got him? It had to be stick, right? Oh, that's brutal. That's a pretty big miss. And it's overtime. Like, you don't even want to go off and get stitched. And that was instant. I'm no doctor, but that looked deep enough to be a stitch. What's going on here? If the oh, I... Here, someone help me. One of the producers help me because I don't have the broadcast. Are they reviewing that for the high stick? And now the officials are coming over. And can this be called as a penalty with an injury? What's what's going on oh, here? It's the scrape under ten, no matter what. Okay, so this that's... is the one time that an icing. Oh, are they? Proceeds this in over. DeBoer knows they're about to get. Who was this? It was March or so. Oh, and he gets Perry right in the face. Yeah, it's not the puck. It's right there. He's going for the puck. It doesn't matter. He's careless with his stick. He gets Perry right in the face. That's absolutely a four-minute uh, double minor. Absolutely. Habs, oh, man. I can't believe Vegas is going to screw this game up. Who doesn't love hockey? Chat freaking out about the no call. I uh, I don't blame you. Surely it's about to get called. For major instances, uh, you got to be able to review. You know, you miss a trip here, a hook there, a hold. I mean, stuff is going to get missed. I think you accept that. You know, it's major instances. That's why we have reviews for goaltender interference. That's why we have reviews for goals that are scored with an offside. I don't understand if those two things are reviewable. Why can't you then review for too many men on the ice? Like, for example, when Tampa has seven guys. Although Berkshire did make a pretty good argument against that. They're really not going to call anything here, eh? I thought he missed about two or three rotations. That's horrible. And, like, look at this. Look at this. How long is this break? How long do you need? And now if you're Vegas, you got to be on your best behavior because you know you're getting the first penalty of overtime. Of course you are. Done my water for the evening. We move on to advanced water. They're really not getting a power play here. Wow. That's really bad, man. Approaching 12 minutes of the fourth period. Wow. And again, one of those defensive zone face-offs for the Canadians. And Nosek wins the draw. And this time, Caulfield took it away from Stone to get it out. And one of the producers is saying, under 10 minutes left with an injury, you can review it for a penalty. So what happened there? Plays it back inside the Canadian line. Shrot up to Foley. 
Montreal should be on a four-minute power play right now. Down towards Price. Get Petrie ahead. Here's Deneau. Lucking it across. Back to Deneau. Watched by Theodore. Brendan Gallagher. Jay Theodore. Perry was bleeding instantly. Pacioretty can't clear it. Theodore moves it ahead for That's probably a smart play there. Just inside the Vegas line. Wow. Unbelievable. You think you think you know how a game's about to end. He, there he is again with that one-handed. Uh, I, no fear, I guess. Oh! Hey! Josh Anderson with the game winner after tying it! Josh Anderson! Oh, Marc-Andre Fleury has got to feel sick right now. Sick after completely giving the game away with just under two minutes to play. They're going to review it. Why not? Why not? It's the overtime winner. That was a close play at the blue line. It was difficult to tell in real time here. And I don't know if we're going to get a good angle. No, it's gee, how can you tell from that angle? I'm not gonna lie, he does look offside. Oh, I'm gonna first of all, if that is onside, that's a sick play. That is a really, really sick passing play. Who doesn't love hockey? Who doesn't love hockey? Perry, yo, he was no way. He's in the dressing room. Bleeding profusely, getting fixed up to go back out there, and the team wins it with him in there when they should have been on the power play. No kidding. No kidding. Who doesn't love hockey? One of the producers saying the timeout was to scrape blood off the ice. Who's? Who's and how to get there? I'm sorry, that's justice. Uh, no, I think that's onside. You can maybe say, was it a high stick? I don't really think it was a high stick either. It's a really, really close play. Who was that with him? Byron? Oh, man. Josh Anderson, we were just talking early in the game. Hasn't done a whole lot. So there's the Paul Star. That's a great move. Great setup. Carey Price, first, second, third star of the game. Well, I guess you got to give second star to Josh Anderson. He did get the game tying and game winning goal. <laughs> Holy cow. Bergevin. I love how excited he gets. Oh, Mark Andre Fleury has got to be sick. I, I really, I really, folks who doesn't love hockey, watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle. Click like, click subscribe, all of that. Who doesn't love hockey? Wow, 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 wowzers. Who doesn't love hockey? The Vegas Golden Knights were out shooting the Habs. 11 nothing at one point. I believe the third period began with Vegas out shooting Montreal. I think it was 30 to 8. Petrangelo takes the lead. Pretty, I mean, I don't expect Price to allow a goal like that. Montreal really isn't able to get anything going. Flurry goes to play the puck behind the net. Puts it between his own. He puts it in his own five hole. And Josh Anderson gets the easiest goal of his National Hockey League career. Game continues. Habs almost win it in the dying seconds of regulation. Overtime starts and Montreal got better and better and better as it went. It felt Flurry had to make a very big save. Jonathan Marcheseau goes for the puck in midair, whacks Corey Perry right in the face, instant blood. No call. 
They call the ice crew out to scrape blood off the ice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. New rule. If you've got to get the ice crew out to scrape blood off the ice, you need to investigate why. Unbelievable. Montreal should have been on a four-minute power play right there. And while Corey Perry is in the dressing room getting stitched up, glued up, whatever playoff contraption, I don't know, ask one of the pitchers in the MLB. Maybe they use some of that on that stuff stick it all together that is unbelievable josh anderson receives the puck beautifully right at the blue line just on side paul byron picks it up i think he had a fake shot into a pass anderson buries it and crashes into the boards only the to jump up and celebrate brilliant who doesn't love hockey? Who doesn't love hockey, baby? Carey Price, over 40 saves. And now Montreal is two wins away from the Stanley Cup final. And six wins away from the Stanley Cup. Fiona, Steve, are we making the Stanley Cup finals? I'll put it this way. Right now, the Montreal Canadiens are more likely than not. Cheers. What a game. What a game. We'll be back in a couple days right here on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. You might as well be here. You might as well not miss it. So I'll tell you what, click like on this video. Click subscribe. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mark andre Fleury, Betty. Oh, I feel bad for him. Let me wrap the way I always wrap. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell your friends. Hockey, anything can happen.